Tilt your head for me. Get up. You can't avoid the pain. Sit still. A moment's rest. Perfection come to life. I sense the presence of an evil spirit. I brought salvation for this poor soul. I'll bring salvation to lost souls as far as my power allows me to. It's time to get started. <laughs> Rescue complete. Back to headquarters. I'm Yuki Sato from Spirit Hunter's Japanese branch. Pleased to meet you. Finally, rest in peace. There are so many possessed people in this place. Purify! Spirits aren't the only things that need rest. Your time among the living is over. There are so many evil spirits. What's going on with this island? I should hold a memorial service. Rescue complete. Back to the headquarters. Only scaredy cats hide here. You can run, but you can't hide. I'm all set. Prepare yourself. Now I'm getting warmed up. Well, that was easy. I wasn't nervous at all. Sorry, I just got sick of seeing you. Don't try me. You went after the wrong person. Cry all you want, I'm not stopping. Get the hell out of here. I can see you. I'll punch you to the sky. Watch your ribs. I just need to rest for a bit. I'm not tired, though. Oh, you messed with the wrong person. Get ready to die! Are you feeling it? I won't be able to stop myself now. Now this is a punch! I told you to be careful. That's what you get. I've been here before. Just kidding. That's a lie. I can do it. After all, I'm special. Sure, I'll go. It's not personal. You thought I wouldn't catch you. Bye. We're all just bound to fall into our own private traps. Not everything a liar says is a lie. Or... Is this a lie too? I remember someone said that people learn to appreciate life when they start to become afraid of death. Who was it? How about a smile for a change? Here. I'll kill you next time. Well, look at the shields coming through. He's got easy access over on towards Jambos. And an ultimate coming through for the cannon. He's going to knock down two. The last one alive is going to be Cairo. And only two seconds left for 9i and Azimi. We're going to a game six. Can C tier end up taking a 20 kill game under their belt? Weiss is down. Oh. That's 18. Jemos makes it 19. And now they're going to get onto Cairo. 
and Shuvi, a 20 kill game coming out for C tier. Oh my god! The flame, Dino Dance, and Lucky Draw on the other zones as well. Gonna be going at it. Let's see what we have going on down here. Some massive damage coming out onto Cavalcade. Oh, oh. oh. Yon does go for the engage. Hits a knock up under the Luke. Forced to jump over the wall. Though an insane amount of damage coming out from the team. Luke trying his best to stay alive, but unfortunately the last one ran just not enough. At wow. You're gonna function actually happening. There's the pull straight in on towards the Isaac. Charm timing is also perfect as well. Quick spin is gone. So Martin struggling a little bit on the health side. A lot of damage coming through from both sides of the team here. The Cecilia not actually gonna get taken down by the Isaac. There is the dash in. There is the lockdown. Now where is the damage coming from? Incapacitata still full oh, HP, no. but the mag just comes in. <laughs> down goes the Elena to drift all over the place. Incapacitata still trying to knock people down. There's the quick spin coming through, but there is not. <laughs> Was trying to run, but I think it's the end. Oh, Peve might oh, be the end of wait, the Wait, alter to the body. <laughs> wait, he's gonna get the res up. Wait, he just, his whole team's fine. <laughs> Why, that's that? Hmm. Well, everyone's gonna pop. Wait, everyone's wait, gonna pop. There goes one. That is a minus three. Oh, no. <laughs> that's oh. very optimistic. <laughs> I don't think that's a real wall that you can jump no, there, please. Oh! <laughs> Embolden just about to uh -oh. come in as what? well. <laughs> and now Coke Shaky as well. Every team but Shield Cat is up here. Yugio's down. Purr's down. Izzy's down. Two members of chatting are gone. Mamma Mia's here as well. Oh my god, Shuvi. Left and right. This is a massacre. Palm trying to do as much damage, but they're not able to find it. People are going to start popping. Smug trying to get out of there. Bomby as well. They're coming on in. Shield Cat is here. Only a few seconds are left for some of these teams. Miochi. It choked out teams even further because now they're locked out of walking into that. That's a three-man wow. F-stop. That is huge. What is needs to go? Trick gets the no. kill, but I don't think they he's going to make kill the it body. anymore. Look at this. No, no, the exclusive is not enough. Yuji was trying to run it down. Arky and Danny Bandy, they're trying to kill this. They don't want this team to have it. They're trying. So rough. Oh, they actually got hit by that. Dodges the bullseye. Oh my god, this is going to be so close, Shuvi, who's going to be able to get it? There's the root down again, but they're not able to pull him back in. And now the wolves are going to be hitting Kuriton, no! I can feel the power of music. I'll sing a song for you. Let's enjoy it now. Love and peace. Leave your body to the music. One time, two time, three time. Now, this is getting real. I won't sing depressing songs. Now to the main stage. I'll accept your request. I already have a request for me. Is that right? An honorable death is better than a dishonorable life. Need to train harder than this. I'm coming after you, Jiren Kai. Tsubame Tachibana is on the way. Greetings. It was a good learning experience. Thanks. Great fight. Wanna see a magic trick? Can't see me. I'm back. I'm not afraid of you. Now! 
I can deal with you. Inspiration can be drawn from anywhere. Inspire me. Trust in my vision. Tilt your head for me. Get up. You can't avoid the pain. Sit still. A moment's rest. Perfection come to life. I sense the presence of an evil spirit. I brought salvation for this poor soul. I'll bring salvation to lost souls as far as my power allows me to. It's time to get started. Rescue complete. Back to headquarters. I'm Yuki Sato from Spirit Hunters Japanese Branch. Pleased to meet you. May you finally rest in peace. There are so many possessed people in this place. Purify! Spirits aren't the only things that need rest. Your time among the living is over. There are so many evil spirits. What's going on with this island? I should hold a memorial service. Rescue complete. Back to the headquarters. Only scaredy cats hide here. You can run, but you can't hide. I'm all set. Prepare yourself. Now I'm getting warmed up. Well, that was easy. I wasn't nervous at all. Sorry, I just got sick of seeing you. Don't try me. You went after the wrong person. You cry all you want, I'm not stopping. Get the hell out of here. I can see you. I'll punch you to the sky. Watch your ribs. I just need to rest for a bit. I'm not tired, though. Oh, you messed with the wrong person. Get ready to die! Are you feeling it? I won't be able to stop myself, you know. Now this is a punch! I told you to be careful. That's what you get. I've been here before. Just kidding. That's a lie. I can do it. After all, I'm special. Sure, I'll go. It's not personal. You thought I wouldn't catch you. Why? We're all just bound to fall into our own private traps. Not everything a liar says is a lie. Or... Is this a lie too? I remember someone said that people learn to appreciate life when they start to become afraid of death. Who was it? How about a smile for a change? Here. I'll kill you next time.
through as well. Look at the shields coming through. He's got easy access over on towards Jambos. And an ultimate coming through for the cannon. He's going to knock down two. The last one alive is going to be Cairo. And only two seconds left for Nine Eye and Azimi. We're going to a game six. Can C tier end up taking a 20 kill game under their belt? Weiss is down. Oh. That's 18. Gemos makes it 19. And now they're going to get onto Cairo and Shuvi. A 20 kill game coming out for C tier. Oh what my god. The flame, Dino Dance, and Lucky Draw on the other zones as well. Going to be going at it. Let's see what we have going on down here. Some massive damage coming out onto Cavalcade. Oh. oh. Unfortunately, Yon does go for the engage. Hits a knock up under the Luke, forced to jump over the wall. Though an insane amount of damage coming out from the team. Luke trying his best to stay alive, but unfortunately, the last one running just not enough. And wow. He's gonna function actually happening. There's the pull straight in on towards the Isaac. Charm timing is also perfect as well. Quick spin is gone. So Martin struggling a little bit on the health side. A lot of damage coming through from both sides of the team here. The Cecilia not actually gonna get taken down by the Isaac. There is the dash in. There is the lockdown. Now where is the damage coming from? Incapacitata still full oh, HP. No. But the mag just comes in. <laughs> down goes the Elena to drift all over the place. Incapacitata still trying to knock people down. There's the quick spin coming through, but there is not. <laughs> Was trying to run, but I think it's the end. Oh, Peve might be oh, the end of wait, the Wait, Alter to the body. <laughs> wait, he's gonna get the res up. Wait, he just, his whole team's fine. <laughs> what? That's that? Hmm. Well, everyone's smug. gonna pop. Wait, everyone's wait, gonna pop. There goes one. That is a minus three. Oh, no. <laughs> That's oh. very optimistic. <laughs> I don't think that's a real wall that you can jump no, there. Even with... Oh! <laughs> Embolden just about to uh -oh. come in as what? well. <laughs> and now Coke Shaky as well. Every team but Shield Cat is up here. Yujio's down. Purr's down. Izzy's down. Two members of chatting are gone. Mamma Mia's here as well. Oh my god, Shuvi. Left and right. This is a massacre. Palm trying to do as much damage, but they're not able to find it. People are going to start popping. Smug trying to get out of there. Bomby as well. They're coming on in. Shield Cat is here. Only a few seconds are left for some of these teams. Miochi. It choked out teams even further because now they're locked out of walking into that. That's a three-man wow. F-stop. That is huge. What is needs to go? Trick gets the no. kill, but I don't think they he's going to kill the body. Anymore. Look at this. No, no, the exclusive is not enough. Yujiro's trying to run it down. Arky and Danny Bandy, they're trying to kill this. They don't want this team to have it. They're trying. So rough. Oh, they actually got hit by that. Dodges the bullseye. Oh my god, this is going to be so close, Shuvi. Who's going to be able to get it? There's the root down again, but they're not able to pull him back in. And now the wolves are going to be hitting Kudetan, no! I can feel the power of music. I'll sing a song for you. Let's enjoy it now. Love and peace. Leave your body to the music. One time, two time, three time. Now, this is getting real. I won't sing depressing songs. Now to the main stage. I'll accept your request. I already have a request for me. Is that right? An honorable death is better than a dishonorable life. Need to train harder than this. I'm coming after you, Michiren Kai. Tsubame Tachibana is on the way. Greetings.
quickly. It was a good learning experience. Thanks. Great fight. Wanna see a magic trick? Can't see me. I'm back. I'm not afraid of you. Now! I can deal with you. Inspiration can be drawn from anywhere. Inspire me. Trust in my vision. Tilt your head for me. Get up. You can't avoid the pain. Sit still. A moment's rest. Perfection come to life. I sense the presence of an evil spirit. I brought salvation for this poor soul. I'll bring salvation to lost souls as far as my power allows me to. It's time to get started. <laughs> Rescue complete. Back to headquarters. I'm Yuki Sato from Spirit Hunters Japanese Branch. Pleased to meet you. May you finally rest in peace. There are so many possessed people in this place. Purify! Spirits aren't the only things that need rest. Your time among the living is over. There are so many evil spirits. What's going on with this island? I should hold a memorial service. Rescue complete. Back to the headquarters. Only scaredy cats hide here. You can run, but you can't hide. I'm all set. Prepare yourself. Now I'm getting warmed up. Well, that was easy. I wasn't nervous at all. Sorry, I just got sick of seeing you. Don't try me. You went after the wrong person. Cry all you want, I'm not stopping. Get the hell out of here. I can see you. I'll punch you to the sky. Your ribs. I just need to rest for a bit. I'm not tired though. Oh, you messed with the wrong person. Get ready to die. Are you feeling it? I won't be able to stop myself now. No, this is a punch. I told you to be careful. That's what you get. I've been here before. Just kidding. That's a lie. I can do it. After all, I'm special. Sure, I'll go. It's not personal. You thought I wouldn't catch you. Bye. We're all just bound to fall into our own private traps. Not everything a liar says is a lie. Or... Is this a lie too? I remember someone said that people learn to appreciate life when they start to become afraid of death. Who was it? How about a smile for a change? Here. Oh. I'll kill 
kill you next time. Well, look at the shields coming through. He's got easy access over on towards Jamos. And an ultimate coming through for the Kenneth. He's going to knock down two. The last one alive is going to be Cairo. And only two seconds left for Nine Eye and Azimi. We're going to a game six. Can C tier end up taking a 20 kill game under their belt? Weiss is down. Oh. That's 18. Jamos makes it 19. And now they're going to get onto Cairo and Shuvi. A 20 kill game coming out for C tier. Oh my god. The flame, Dino Dance, and Lucky Draw on the other zones as well. Gonna be going at it. Let's see what we have going on down here. Some massive damage coming out onto Cavalcade. Oh, oh. oh. Yon does go for the engage. Hits a knock up under the Luke, forced to jump over the wall. Though an insane amount of damage coming out from the team. Luke's trying his best to stay alive, but unfortunately, the last one running just not enough. That, wow gonna function actually happening there's the pull straight in on towards the isaac charm timing is also perfect as well quick spin is gone so martin struggling a little bit on the health side a lot of damage coming through from both sides of the team here the Cecilia not actually going to get taken down by the isaac there is the dash in there is the lockdown now where is the damage coming from incapacitata still full oh, hp no. but the mag just comes in <laughs> down goes the elena to drift all over the place incapacitata still trying to knock people down there's the quick spin coming through but there is not <laughs> Was trying to run, but I think it's the end. Oh, Peve might be oh, at the end of wait, the Oh, wait, altered to the body. He wait, he's gonna get the res up. Wait, he just, his ult is fine. What? Wait, that's that? Hmm. Well, everyone's gonna pop. Wait, everyone's wait, there... gonna pop. There goes one. That is a minus three. Oh, no. <laughs> that's oh. very optimistic. <laughs> I don't think that's a real wall that you can jump no, there, Booyah. With... Oh! <laughs> Emboldened just about to uh -oh. come in as what? well. <laughs> and now Coke Shaky as well. Every team but Shield Cat is up here. Yu-Gi-Oh's down. Purr's down. Izzy's down. Two members of chatting are gone. Mamma Mia's here as well. Oh my god, Shuvi. Left and right. This is a massacre. Palm tried to do as much damage, but they're not able to find it. People are going to start popping. Smug trying to get out of there. Bomby as well. They're coming on in. Shield Cat is here. Only a few seconds are left for some of these teams. Miochi. It choked out teams even further because now they're locked out of walking into that. That's a three-man wow. F-stop. That is huge. What is needs to go? Trick gets the no. kill, but I don't think they he's going to make kill it the body. anymore. Look at this. No, no, the exclusive is not enough. Yuji was trying to run it down. Arky and Danny Bandy, they're trying to kill this. They don't want this team to have it. They're trying. So rough. Oh, they actually got hit by that. Dodges the bullseye. Oh my god, this is going to be so close, Shuvi, who's going to be able to get it? There's the root down again, but they're not able to pull him back in. And now the wolves are going to be hitting Kurenton, oh. no! I can feel the power of music. I'll sing a song for you. Let's enjoy it now. Love and peace. Leave your body to the music. One time, two time, three time. Now, this is getting real. I won't sing depressing songs. Now to the main stage. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Eternal Return Challenger Series Day 1. Uh, as you all know, my name is Lucy, and I'll be here as one of your casters today. And I am actually here with a newer face. I'm here with Uzma. How are you doing today? 
Hi everyone, Uzma here. Uh, you guys might know me as a player and streamer first and foremost, but I will be casting the Eternal Return Challenger Series here with Lucy today and all subsequent weeks, and we're just so excited to be here today. I'm Lucy, so excited. how are you feeling today? Oh, I'm just so excited. It's The weather's nice. The games will be fun. I bet everyone's been so excited for this. I mean, it's been kind of quite a bit and everyone's been looking forward to it. I mean, our last big tourney was last season, so I'm excited that this one's starting a little bit sooner, get some more action a little bit sooner this time around. Yeah, I know personally for me, you know, I really just enjoy watching competitive esports. I love, you know, seeing everyone get prepared, get ready, and just get ready to game. So I'm really excited to see what these teams have in store for us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just excited, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, me too. Well, I guess we can go right into, uh, let's learn a little bit about what this tourney is all about. So I'll be uh, discussing with you guys the overview here, kind of giving you a look at the future schedule and prize pool. Uh, as you can see, we will have three weeks of group stage, and this time around, we'll actually be having a wild card, which I'll kind of tell you guys a little bit about in a bit here. And then we'll go into the grand finals. Uh, as you can see, our prize pool is next, uh, with first place getting $1,000 plus 2,400 NP for their team, and then everything following suit. And then on the right side is going to be your circuit matrix. So this will tell you how many points the teams will be getting uh, in their blocks when they get first, second, third, and fourth, and then so continuing. And next here, we'll have the second part of the overview, which is a little bit more information that you guys are probably looking about. So this is going to be a little bit different than last season. Uh, as I said, we are adding a wild card format. So now instead of the first two teams in each block, just automatically advancing, it'll only be the first team, as you can see here. And then second and third of each block will go to the wild card round, which will be the Saturday before finals. And... Also, as you can see here, we are still doing the uh, format from last time being the... Oh my gosh, I'm drawing such a huge blank. You know what I'm talking about, the checkpoint format. There we go, that's <laughs> what it's called. <laughs> so yeah, checkpoint format will be for finals this time around as well. So I mean, you guys can take a glance at this and kind of gives you a good overview of what we will be looking at for the next four weeks here. But other than that, I think we can go into the teams, which I know Uzma is super excited to, to talk about here. We can see who's all going to be playing today. Yep, just to touch up on it again, we do have four blocks or four groups here, and they will be playing in blocks of two groups. We have block A, B, C, and D, and they will be round robining each other group. Uh, today, we are featuring block A and C. With block A, we do have No Flame with Team Captain Superior, followed by Nazimi, Frankie Doodle, and Gobu. We have Blood Sports with Team Captain Delinko, followed by Eclisp, Hachimi, and Silver Ace. Team 3, we do have the Kaniacs with Team Captain Annalise, Lilypetal, Lochte, and what is that name? Shuvi Senpai? My Ooh. glove. <laughs> and finally, rounding out Block A is uh, Bruh with Christian Rush as Team Captain, Chocobo Yao, La Loca Mota, and Seven Strike. And then for Block C, we do have Homeless Laptops, a returning team, Cairo Shoot, Team Captain, Jast, Wisu, and Gem. We do have Team Kui with Bowser, Team Captain Effect, Kitty King, and Swag. And we have the Envoys of Hell with Team Captain Archdemon of Hell, Flames of Wrath, Biawi, and Neostragon. And rounding it all out, we do have Wafflers with Team Captain Snowies, Reiki, Ramlito, and E. Danchan. So wow. we will be seeing four games with these groups today. Uh, and again, we will be seeing Group B and D tomorrow. So lots to look forward to. And, you know, I'm I'm really interested to see how some of these new teams go. I don't know if... Actually, there's there's one team that we had last season. It is Homeless Laptops. Their roster remained unchanged. But I think pretty much everyone else is completely new. So, like, anything could happen, really. And actually, why don't you go ahead and get us started with this champion select, Lucy? Yeah, so as we go in here, we're already starting off with game one. Uh, you can see that Gobu will be starting out for No Flame here, and Gem will actually be starting out with Homeless Laptops. Uh, one thing I did want to mention quick that I may have forgotten in the overview is this time around, uh, all of our teams do have a fourth player, as you did see in the team section. Um, these teams are actually allowed to swap in their fourth member after game two, which can kind of add a lot of variety to our games in the second half of the day. So a lot of these players can choose to sub in someone in the second half if they so do choose, which will kind of give us a little bit more of a variety. But in this first round here, we'll just see these players here. And, you know, a lot of these look pretty normal. I don't actually see anything uh, out of the ordinary from a lot of these players. These are all characters that they do play very often. The only one I could really think of off like, the top of my head that's a little unusual is Flames of Wrath on Laura. Uh, I don't really see that that often out of them. 
Yeah, I know Flames of Wrath really been practicing this Laura pick in solo queue recently. Uh, really interested to see how it does in competitive play. I feel that North America hasn't really picked up this pick. Uh, but I know that in Korea, it's always been very popular. Obviously, you have people like G-Work playing. It's a very high levels of pro play. Uh, we also do see, I think, a pretty standard amongst a lot of these teams. We do have a lot of emotes. Uh, something that did just recently get buffed, as well as Soul Sleeper. We do see a couple of those as well. We have one on Chocobo Yao for Team Bra on that Theodore. So interested to see how these teams can play around the team composition-based tactical skills, as opposed to, you know, the more individual ones around, you know, Quake, Force Field, and Blink. Uh, I feel like team play is really where you can make these these group tactical skills shine. You know, when you do have the comms, you have all of the people working together, and you can get the most out of something like your uh, protocol. So really interested to see how that works out, how these teams play around it. Uh, and kind of like you talked about too, I am interested to see how some of these picks do work out. We do have a Yawn for Blood Sports. I don't think this is a pick that we usually see too much. Do uh, you want to touch up on, on some of these other picks maybe? Yeah, along with the Yawn, we do see Jast on Nakadia, which is kind of a newer character. Uh, again, she was also recently buffed, so we'll have to see if that is something that kind of shines here in the team play. It looks like they are going to be going for like a long-range comp with Cairo being that supportive tank in the front line trying to keep them safe. Uh, so that'll be an interesting to look, thing to look out for, as well as the talk on uh, tactical skills if you know a lot of the team-based ones. Soul Stealer is one that we'll see more of. That mm -hmm. one also got buffed pretty recently, so having that like team-wide Omni-Siphon and movement speed is going to be really nice to catch a lot of these teams when they're not expecting it, or even getting out of situations that could, you know, cause them to wipe, especially in the early game. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes for a lot of them. There are some teams, though, that are just going like with their classic. I mean, we've always seen the team of No Flame running, I mean, this exact <laughs> same team comp as, you know, last season. I mean, you know, if it not broken don't fix it so i mean they're gonna keep on running with that and then you know a lot of these other teams are a little bit newer as we kind of talked about earlier with only one team in this uh these two blocks for today being like the exactly the same which is homeless laptops so we'll be seeing a lot of different things this time around you know a lot of stuff we're not really used to especially with what's being contested which there's been quite a few changes uh i mean more trees spawning has been always really exciting <laughs> Yeah, and kind of to touch up on what you just said, you know, we don't have any same teams as last circuit except for uh, that and Homeless Laptops. We do have fragments of teams, though. You know, we do have No Flame. They do have Superior and Frankie, that duo sticking together. Uh, the Kaniacs, for people who aren't familiar, Annalise and Lily Petal actually were huge duo players when that mode was here. Uh, they are very well known for their tank ADC play, as we do see in that Estelle and Nadine. Uh, we do have Bra is comprised of formerly the Kids members. Uh, Christian and Seven Stripe. We do see the Hyunwoo and Nathapon. Uh, they love doing their Nathapon combo into Hyunwoo ult, so we'll have to see if that happens. But we do see a little bit of tussling here. Kitty K may be looking for a little bit of a three on Chocobo Yao. Can he get out? He does Soul Stealer out. Should make it just fine on this gate. Yeah, a lot of these builds getting online just quick, and even quicker than that, E Danchan on Marcus going down. Yeah, it looks like the team of Eclipse here actually choosing to group early in police station. I know this is something that they do pretty often. They prioritize grouping in a zone and then just kind of sweeping as one, getting the farm along the way. Whereas some teams might choose to kind of solo farm a little bit in, you know, day one, night one. But, you know, just from like glancing at the map, uh, it looks like a lot of them actually did choose to group, which is a little bit different here. So it is kind of nice to see. We'll have to see if any early fights actually do come out of this, or if, you know, a lot of them are actually prioring different zones to farm. It will be interesting as we get started here. Only roughly 30 seconds left in day one, and usually night one is when stuff kind of starts getting wild. We got the bear spawns coming up, as well as the mutant camps. So we'll have to see which ones are going to be the ones that are prioed, as Kitty King does actually get out of this one with the help of his ultimate here. He's going to walk away. Nothing ever happened. Yeah, kind of like you were talking about, you know, these teams grouping up early. I think this is one of those really cool moments that you can see in pro play for Eternal Return versus, you know, your average solo queue experience, you know. Teams coordinating their final zones so they can group up together, maybe get some early picks, as we did see Bloodsports did pick up that early kill. Now picking up just a lot of farm. Uh, I am interested to see how some of these teams play around, you know, some of these new spawns as we do feature this new bear in school. Uh, I think most importantly, though, we do have to look at that Nadine pick. Uh, Nadine, you know, a character that does scale very well into the late game, as long as she's getting those stacks. Uh, Lily Puddle, very well known for getting those stacks, and actually we do have a fight here. Eclipse getting in on Reiki. Reiki going down immediately. No protocol or soul stealer will save them, and they are going to have to run out of here, as that's two kills picked up for Blood Sports really quick off the bat. Yeah, they are not wasting any time and getting some early points on the board here. Is Lily Petal's team possibly finding homeless laptops here? Are just deciding to back up though. Unfortunately, a little bit late for the mutant spawn, so they're not gonna be able to get anything in hotel. As another team actually looking at 
blood sports here as well everyone kind of on the top side of the map here kind of a surprise as you know a lot of our objectives are kind of in the middle of the map but maybe we'll get some more fights coming out here we'll have to see Gemos possibly walking up a little too far just kidding he decided not to <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do see the fire station meteorite we do see the beach meteorite and as always we have hotel tree cemetery tree and temple tree have to see how these teams group up for that it does look like we are going to get a high concentration here in the beach area as again we do have beach meteorite and hotel tree so we do see three teams but speaking of will we do have triple boy out getting caught out a little bit by no flame no flame catching him out in factory uh just trying to finish his build and they said uh we're gonna finish you instead how about that <laughs> and then we have another fight here it looks like lily petal actually getting yoinked out of there but isn't really use the flash to hopefully get out the safety as long as with the monkey wire eden chen unfortunately gonna be taken out lockney is gonna actually hit the queen here this is gonna be another kill picked up for them in the early game any second now reiki should be falling which is actually gonna be pretty bad for them as the objectives are gonna spawn here in one second so they're not gonna be able to contest anything which might actually put them behind in the mid game Oh, it does look like No Flame almost casting Christian out there. They are going to pick up this tree for themselves. Nice and easy work for them. A little bit of RNG up for themselves. Uh, it does look like Homeless Laptop did pick up the hotel tree. We did see the Kaniacs after picking up that kill in Forest. They do get the be uh, the beach meteorite. And just a little bit of farming starting out here. Chocobo Yacht maybe scouting out the area. I don't know if his team's nearby. Just checking it out. Gotta get out of there. Not worth dying for these wolves. But uh-oh, it does look like he might run into Homeless Laptops here. Kairi Shoot maybe looking for the engage, but not quite getting it. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to walk out of here. I'm not sure where Chocobo Yao's team is, but Kairoshoot and his team, unfortunately, a little bit late to archery, so not going to be able to get what's here. And I think they do recognize it, and they are just going to decide to leave, have to find somewhere else to farm, unfortunately. Got to get those wolf camps as they spawn, because a lot of these teams just prior with so fast after first objective is Delinko getting chased by No Flame here. Gobu just going to keep walking forward. Is going to prop knock the protocol, but unfortunately, no defense shred on Delinko. As Frankie actually is going to keep going for this, just kidding, he decided not to. He just reads my mind. He's so smart. <laughs> yeah, Sylvie's so good again at Chase. Uh, Frankie actually canceling Delinko's dash on the Bianca, but Bianca with that ult, you know, really slowing it up. And we do have a huge fight here. Trickle out getting stunned. Lockney hitting the stun on two with the Night Fork as well, but Lockney just able to survive. Christian is going to go down. Lily Petal dashing forward, picking up the kill on 7 Strike. It's just Trickle Boy Yao. This would be disastrous to go down here, but it does look like the Theodore is going to make it out, but oh. Not sure if they took any RNG, but they definitely took their lives right there. Yeah, that was really close. Unfortunately, Lily Petal not having the flash available to keep on chasing a little bit further. That was so close to being a team wipe. But hey, they'll take the two kills and the chance to uh, get the kiosk here to get some more, you know, upgrades online before our battle zones are about to pop in 30 seconds here. It looks like we might have two teams up in Temple, which are actually fighting here. So he's just going to pop the Quake and get the stun onto Flames of Wrath, but unfortunately not going to continue it here as Reiki does need to back up. The ultimate is going to come out to try to zone them here. Eden Chen doing a lot of damage on the Meowie here, who's actually going to have to flash out. This team fight is actually a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Is Eden Chen trying his best to get any kills here as Archbeam in Hell is trying to get as much damage as he can. It's going to get frozen, but is able to dash out as one finally falls here right before Battle zone actually hits, so this team is actually gonna have to back out. And oh, yep, it looks like their comrade is actually able to crawl out of that one. So not a little bit extra for that team in Temple. They are gonna actually gonna get a bigger upgrade from that. Yeah, and over here in Forest, we do see a standoff between No Flame and Homeless Laptops. It does look like Homeless Laptops is going to opt out to back up, uh, but we do have this battle zone going down with the lead pedal on the Nadine, getting her shots in, Lockney looking for those chest pieces, trying to get the sun analyst, engaging him, but taking a lot of damage. We do see a protocol going off. These teams are going to have to fight a big trap, just whiffing everyone. Analyst putting up the shield, dashing in. The timers are going down. Analyst getting dangerously low. The heal drone popping. They're going to have to make something happen. Analyst forced to go in, but goes down. Lily Petal trying to do her best to clean it up. Lockney goes down, and this should be lights out for the Kaniacs. Nice successful fight there from Team Kui over in Arkham. Yeah, unfortunately, just not enough timer to continue that one for them. They unfortunately have played it just a little too slow, and that's that's always such a bad thing too, you know, when you're in a battle zone so late. Now you're just gonna not be able to hit these, you know, farming locations as early as a lot of these other teams. So it's a little bit harder to kind of catch up in the mid game here. As you can see, like Homeless Laptops is getting the entirety of Beach for free. As you see, No Flame getting the entirety of Uptown as well. So we'll have to see where the Kaniacs decide to spawn to be able to get some farm here. A lot of these areas are already chosen. It looks like they will go hospital. So hopefully they get something there. Yeah, we'll have to see how many stacks that Nadine does get later in the game. Lucy, as an Nadine player yourself, how many would you say at this stage in the game is good? I, I do believe uh, that is a 99 I see. 107, yeah. 115. I, 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 get I mean, I think it's a little bit on the lower side. I find now uh, that I'm getting at least 100 stacks before day two. 
uh, if you're on like a good farming route. Um, but I mean, you're gonna still be getting a lot of stacks throughout the game since you now also get stacks on kills, which you know that could be a lot of it. They're not getting a lot of kills in this mid game. But yeah, I will say that, you know, losing that battle zone very late will definitely hinder your stacks because you can't get into a good farming zone. Uh, so it could just be that their deaths are a little bit unfortunate this time around, where they're not able to get a good farming rotation after these objectives, which, as you can tell, is making a huge difference before our next objective spawn here, actually, in 15 seconds. Uh, not a lot really being contested, though, from what I can see, just glancing at the map. Yeah, a lot of teams spread out looking to just pick up this farm. This is the start of day three and five seconds for those who don't know. That is when revives are no longer free. If your teammate goes down, you will have to wait for them to go all the way down, and you have to spend 200 credits to res them at a kiosk. So none of the teams opting to want to look for that, obviously, as you lose 200 credits, uh, you don't get to call a meter at a tree or something like that, and instead you're down a member for a lot of the time. Does look like we do have Wafflers pick up a nice little meter for themselves, but no flame closing in. Maybe looking like they want to fight. Looks like they are going to get out of here. The Art of Teleport getting them out of there without losing too much timer. It does look like no flame still chasing them. We'll have to see if they're looking for a big fight. Superior with four RNG items. He is glammed up. He is ready to go. Frankie <laughs> riding that moped up forward, getting that fuel. They said, hey guys, we're going to fight, but oh Ranky said, actually, we're going to dash out. Arda, <laughs> I have teleports. Yeah, that's actually crazy that they're still trying to chase this here. And, you know, we don't even know. Is there another team above them is what's kind of scary. We do see the pings on the map. So there might be yeah, an additional team right above them. And I think this team is recognizing it now here. So they're going to have to be careful. They don't want to get sandwiched. This forest is really populated right now. And since we're kind of in a low time, we, let, let's take a chance to look at what our RNG looks like for all of these teams here. We have this team kind of still going around the map. Let's see who's kind of in a good spot. It looks like, unfortunately, our team ate a little bit on a lower end here, but No Flame having a lot of RNG on both of their carries, as well as Lily Petal's team. Everything's kind of, you know, spread out here along with the other teams. We are going to get engaged from Kyra here, actually getting huge oh damage on top of Eden Chan. Gemos is doing so much damage on this Ava. That's almost complete death if anyone gets taunted by the Mai here. That's actually crazy. I did not expect them to blow up so fast. As another fight is actually in here with the Rain of the Vampire Queen starting it off here. Swag still completely healthy. Gonna try to save Kitty Kang and is able to do so with the help of the Jenny Pass. But Delinko has to run. Is he able to get out of this one? And that will be actually our first team dropping oh, out so in game unfortunate. three. Yeah, you were speaking about blowing up and then we saw a Eclipse <laughs> immediately blow up. A little bit unfortunate for them. They are the first team out. As we do see a little bit of a standoff here. Envoys of Hell versus No Flame. Each team opting to not fight. Looks like they are gearing up to get that Omega spawning in Police Station. Uh, I did want to talk about No Flame's items a little bit. Uh, Superior and Frankie actually both wearing that Clatter Green. Increased healing. And they do have that Alonso as well. So this team, they heal so much. Superior, you know, on that Sylvia, he does heal with his E and his RE and his passive. Frankie Doodle healing with his Q on Sylvia. This team is very hard to kill. They have a very great mid-range poke, you know, with Sua and uh, Sylvia. So pretty hard to engage this team as well with the, uh, that Alonso with the Spell Shield. It does look like No Flame is opting to back away from this Omega. Not totally sure for the reason. As it does go down to Team Kui pretty quickly. Lily Petal's team not able to get there, but we do see a little bit of a chase here. Team Homeless Laptops running away from Bruh. Not sure if they're trying to fight or not, but Cairo looking for an engage potentially on my 7 strike. Maybe looking for a Nazapon ult. Let's oh. see what happens. Oop, Gem pushing some poke out there. Just distancing them out. Christian looks like he really wants to fight this fight. He is gearing and ready to go. Clearing wards. Not sure how they can engage though, besides that Nazapon ult that we talked about. But we do see here we go. No flame fighting out Team Kui. Fighting off for that console control, that kiosk control, but it looks like it's just a little Mexican standoff we got. Yeah, a lot of these teams just kind of poking it out here. Christian and Seven Strike still trying to look for this angle. Seven Strike probably just trying to look for the F stop angle here as Seven Strike is going to try to get some poke on Cairo, but Cairo just trying to get some distance for his team. It does so much damage from Gemos actually. Christian already half health. Is he able to get him here? He is, and Gemos is going to use the flash to safety as Cairo is still completely healthy thanks to the exclusive as Jass is going to go on the aggressive here. Now they just need to take about Chocobo. Yeah, will he get out? Is his passive available here for this bush? Is he able to juke them out? He is not, unfortunately, I don't think, as we do see the cameras coming out, Claymores being landed. It's going to try to hide in this corner, but unfortunately, it is not going to be the corner to hide in, as it's going to be our next team going out here. Any- oh! Oh! Wait! Oh. No, he did it! <laughs> I thought he was down! That was going to be the Juke of a Sentry, as another team is a fighting here. Locky trying their best against Gobu here, as- Actually, this is a huge 3 feet it looks like, as Meow is actually now trying to fight No Flame as well. Arch Team of Impel oh. is going to try to get the interception, as Frankie is going to go down, but Superior and Gobu using the jump pad here to get out, but they have to be careful as another team is on the other side. 
Yeah, a bit messy. Envoys of Health picking up the good side of the fight, though. It does look like they got themselves a kill, maybe a little bit of credits. We do see Lockney having to run up here trying to get the res on Lily Petal. I do believe they have enough credits. And actually, Annalise crawling around at hospital should be able to self res here. I wouldn't be too worried. But actually, Lockney is getting chased. Flames of Wrath on that Laura chasing relentlessly. Lockney, what can you do? Can you get over this wall? It does look like he will be safe and should make it out. Although Chloe is flanking down here on the bottom. Can Chloe make it in time? It's so Whoa, scary for Lockie to get a dodge and knock up. Okay, the dodge and knock up. Is, is it enough? The checkmate coming out here. Another castling over the wall to safety. Unfortunately, not going to hit the knock up, but this is kind of not where you want to be. Annalise is trying to res in this corner, so they're just going to walk right past their teammate. Hopefully, they don't know. Oh, no. They notice oh. Annalise, so it will be a teammate going down in another minus 200, unfortunately. Oh, uh, yeah. Minus 200 to minus 400 in the blink of an eye. Really unfortunate. Uh, we oh, can see no so here in factory. They're looking to get this res, but there are people calling on this kiosk. Can they do Actually, they pull up Lily Petal. Did get res, but she is going to go down. Oh, it's so unfortunate. They did get the res, but an ensuing fight afterwards. It does look like Gobu's going to oh go down gosh. as well. Envoys of Hell just picking up kill after kill after kill here. And we do see Waffler sitting in a bush, maybe looking for their chance to strike. Uh-oh, Superior caught out. What can you do? They do see him on the cam. They do dash oh. for him, but oh my god, they have no timer. They got chased and pushed through fours. Superior just able to walk out of there. He does have credits to res. He just has to find the safe space, but it does look like he might be able to here in Chapel. Although Homo Laptops is here, there is nowhere to go. So they are probably going to come back towards Superior. Yeah, it looks like he's going to hit the console. We'll see if he notices them here. There's not a lot of spaces left. I mean, you have a hospital and police and maybe like Temple if they want to tank some red. But Super knows that these guys are in the area, so he's just going to hide it out here. A little bit of a scary situation. They do. This team has so much bush check with the Kadia W and you know the uh, the Ian Gemo. So he doesn't see. Where'd them. he go? He, he, he left. Oh my gosh! <laughs> He's like Houdini. <laughs> yeah. So super living to see another day. Uh, I'll have to Somewhere. see if he's able to get his team. <laughs> up in time he does only have like what 20 seconds here so he's gonna have to rush to a hospital call in i believe yeah it does look like homeless laptops is setting the trap waiting in the shadows they are keeping track of where team wafflers is they know they're probably going to call here we'll have to see if they go for a huge engage we will be looking out for kyra shoot on that my looking for a ward hop taunt to maybe engage and then a follow-up with gemos for maybe the one shot they are getting the call they will see this are they gonna pull up they see nothing i don't know where they are no, I think they're just still hiding. We're just, you know, waiting out. They probably see the they do know that Collins are being are happening right now. So they are just gonna scout oh, it out. It looks like they did get an engage on to uh, Snowy's right away, actually. It looks like a taunt engage will be the death of Snowy's here. The team is so strong once Dremos actually gets items that like a taunt I think is like death for any person that gets caught in it. Yeah, on the backside though, we do have no flame fully back and fully functional. They did get the res on all three members. Day four, this is the final time to res. They have about 20 seconds. It does look like Wallflowers did get that uh, Elena back up and running. Uh, we do see no flame here. Starting up the wick though, here comes Homo Slapthop. So they are in close proximity. Are they going to contest it? They actually look like they're going to back up. Something not to do it. They know there's a team behind them. And this might just be free for no flame. Although Wick has other cool. ideas walking back up the chapel. <laughs> She's in the middle. Well, let's see what happens. There's three oh teams God, here actually. Teams. What's going to happen? Ooh, oh, Kaja does take actually it. actually picked it up. Oh, does Gemos get the items? He oh. tried to get it with the long range no. grab. I don't think he got it, though. I think Superior got it. Let me check. Yeah, Superior picked up the items. We do see Homo Slapdots picking up the wick. Arguable which one's better, but honestly, I'd rather have uh, the buff. Oh. And we do actually see Envoys of Hope going down. Uh, Team Kui, you know, the silent killers. They have been picking off teams here and there, but they've kind of been staying on the edges of the map. Yeah, so we have, oh, it looks like No Flame possibly finding another team here. So yeah, a little unfortunate that Homeless Laptops didn't get to pick up the items, but they burst at the end of Wick so fast. I mean, with Ava and Katia being so safe, they're able to actually just snipe the Wick buff, but we'll have to see if they're able to do anything with the Wick buff. I mean, they're very, very strong. And as we mentioned so many times, like one taunt is all they need on one person to completely burst them. So they have to keep a lookout for that here, but it looks like they're not really on the aggressive this time around as we see No Flame kind of scouting out anyone to kill on the island here they do know a team is here super trying to get some poke out prior before getting this console vision back it looks like Ooh, it does look like frankie is going to get the push check here <laughs> taking a little bit of poke damage. damage shouldn't be too much here but we actually do see all four remaining teams uh coming to a head here in factory i do believe hospital is still open but it looks like everyone's kind of just pushing towards this area looks like like you said homeless laptops is taking a bit slow taking it easy they do know they have a very good comp when it comes to those final zones, you know, like you said, two long-range carries, you know, in the Eva and Katja, very hard to push into. 
Uh, but it does look like they are going to push forward a little bit. Waffler is taking a little bit of sniper shots from the side. But uh-oh, here they are. Sam, which they know they're in a rough place. They do have Arda R. So it is interesting to see what they could potentially do to get out of here. Some amazing dodges here. Trying to take as little damage as possible. I don't know if Homeless Laptops knows that there's a potential 3P, but they are holding their ground. They are keeping this area of the map down. And it's just a really tight spot for Waffles here. Yeah, the nice thing about the, the team comp of Homeless Laptops is they have so many ways to check bushes and so much ways to check for like long range vision with the sniper skill as well. So they can definitely take it slow going into a lot of these zones and it should always be safe for them to do so. So I mean, yeah, as you can see, there's the sniper shots once again to see if this team is in the corner. They probably do know No Flame is here at this time around too. So they're just going to kind of wait it out. They don't want to be the ones in the middle. It's a little unfortunate for the team of Wafflers. There's no way to get out here besides the Arda, which we mentioned before. But you know, you don't want to teleport into another team as well as Super. I'm trying to get some poke out again on Edan Shan. Or, <laughs> or I was going to say there is or. a new jump pad here for everyone who doesn't know. Uh, this is new within the last two days. So, you know, this is an option, but it's pretty rough. I think all the teams are aware. No Flame did see the sniper shots from the other team, but they are just whittling them down. They're taking oh, no. so much damage. No Flame taking no damage as well is important to note. You know, Frankie just healing them up superior is free to poke. And Frankie just heals him if he takes anything. So it's just a really rough place. Uh, I do think this is going to end up being a stalemate, though, with nothing really happening. And we do have, I believe, the final zones here, our factory and hospital. If we could get a very, very quick map check, it is. It does look like Team Kui will hold the hospital final zone. Uh, for anyone who is not aware, this is also new within the last two days on the most recent patch. Uh, the two final zones of the map will each have a safe zone on their own. So we can see the factory one here is where No Flame is, and in the hospital it is where Kui is. Uh, these two zones have been extended to make 3Ps a little less likely in these final zones, you know, so these three teams will be duking out for this one, and the other team should pretty much be on their own in hospital. So we should keep our focus here, see how these teams break into it. Uh, I don't see a lot of cameras for Team Wafflers. Uh, I think that's going to be really rough on them. Uh, looks like Jast is also pretty low on food on this Katja. This will be a resource battle of attrition. We'll have to see who breaks it. Looks like they are slowly pushing in. The timers are getting low. No Flame opting to go left here, losing a little bit of the zone, but not trying to get 3 feet. It is like getting oh a gosh. lot of poke on Superior. Look at all that damage. Looks like Wafflers opting to sit on the side, but they are the uh, lowest on timer, I believe, so they will have to push it in. And they yeah, are Ricky. getting taken down. All the teams going down low. Lucy, take it away. Oh, this is actually going to be so scary. I'm surprised, actually, yeah, the team of Reiki here is going to get the zone here. So they're going to be the ones that are getting sandwiched. So these teams need to make a decision. Gobu's team is going to try to poke them out. I mean, Reiki is a low on oh. timer. So as long as they stay in this zone, he is going to explode. And this is just going to be such a mess to look at. Snowy's is going to try to rip the ulti, but unfortunately not going to hit. Eight seconds for the homeless laptop. So it looks like No Flame is going to have the most timer. They need to get some kills if they want to stay alive here. But No Flame being the ones with the most timer, it looks like it will be their zone to take here as Pyro will be following suit in just a second. Jazz trying his best here to get a kill, at least on Goku does get one, but as we just talked about, No Flame having the most timer, so they will be the winners of this bottom zone. And Kui just got their own zone. I'm surprised no one decided to go up there. And as you can tell now, it chooses one of the zones and that will be the one for the final zone. So Kui is gonna have to try to move in to this team of No Flame here. Or is it, no, no, just kidding, I lied. It's the hospital zone. I cannot yeah. see the orange. I'm blind. <laughs> so it is going to be the team of Kui getting their final zone. So they are like double lucky. They know they have no one contesting them into their zone being final. So they can kind of decide to hold it out here. Ooh. No Flame is gonna actually going to try to go around so they don't get gate kept. We'll have to yeah, see I... if this team recognizes it. Yeah, I do like this. And again, another small change is after that final zone is broken down, the teams do get a full set of timer to work with. We do see Gobu getting dangerously low. He does ult to stay alive a little bit longer, but Swag is going to take him down. Kitty Kang shooting with that jetty. He does go down superior dangerously low. Looks like Frankie is also down on the bottom side. Kui going two for zero, and this should just be a formality. And Kui looking to finish it off. They are going to take down these bodies. There will be no reses, and this should be a win for them. Frankie trying valiantly to win, but does go down. Yeah, team of Kui getting the first win of the day here. Uh, congratulations to them. You get to see the, the super swag. Oh. Cutscene, oh my god, look oh, at him. Cut. And the new skin too? Oh my gosh, how lucky Thank are we? You. Thank you, Nimble Neuron. I love new skins. Oh my god. <laughs> That Yuki skin is honestly probably one of my favorites in the whole game. Just the effects on it, just like everything he does is so swag. You know, the blue flames everywhere. It's kind of it's it's kind of lit. Yeah, I didn't know. It's it's great. <laughs> and yeah, what a what a fun game to start off with. I mean, yeah, we saw a lot of fighting. You know, in the first day, as you guys all noticed, we were talking about how a lot of the teams actually really like to group up early, and that did cause a lot of chaos in the first day or so. And surprisingly enough, we didn't actually have our first team fall until day three, with all the fighting that was happening. So it's kind of a yeah. surprise to me.
Yeah, I was surprised that it took a while for a team to fall, but I think once one team fell, we had, what, three teams immediately fall was pretty surprising. I think uh, another small change that happened this most recent patch is the mid-game. There are less zones to farm and to be in. I believe mm -hmm. it went from 15 to 13 or 12 on day three, and then it continues to get smaller and smaller from there. So really interested to see how the other games will go forward. Obviously, these teams going out early, hoping to maybe get a better footing, not go out as early, get some more points for themselves. And speaking of that, we will be getting the points totaled here for the rest of game one and we'll get everyone ready for game two shortly yeah i mean we can talk about a lot that happened that game i mean that was like so the first game is always really exciting you kind of get to see what it's gonna like it's kind of like a pre-tell of what's gonna happen in the future games uh as you can tell like there wasn't a lot of zone contestion for like the first uh rng that dropped i didn't really see a lot that was being contested everyone kind of just like went to their own and like no one really contested it. It's like everyone kind of had their own game plan, and it's like everyone knew of each other's game plan. It was kind of silly. Like we didn't see a lot going on. We saw what one team almost fall right before the beach meteor, mm -hmm. and that was Lily Petal's team. And as we talked about it, kind of put a stunt into their mid game. Uh, the Nadine get, didn't got a lot of stacks, so it kind of made them a little bit weaker. And you know that kind of all snowballed even after the battle zone loss as well. And that also happened to another team in the temple battle zone. They lost like right before. Uh, so deaths like that can really stunt your mid game and you can kind of see it show but that team that lost in temple actually still kind of did pretty good throughout the rest of the game so they kind of got to pick that back up yeah and kind of like you mentioned you know a lot of these teams you know a lot of nerves obviously it's, it's the first game in a new season first game in a new tournament with new teammates a lot of nerves getting out of there maybe some little bit of shaky play shaky calm so hopefully see those ironed out these teams you know giving their best foot forward from here on out and also i think something else to mention is that these teams you know a lot of this game is about information gathering. A lot of it is about, you know, changing your plan to fit the mold of the teams you're fighting, the characters you're fighting. And I think one important part that you mentioned was, you know, that first RNG spawn, you know, a lot of these teams will figure out, okay, this team likes to go to this tree. This team likes to go for a meteorite. You know, these teams like to look for, you know, these mutant spawns on 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 night one or, or <laughs> night two, rather, day, day two. Yeah. Spawn. <laughs> so, like, I think a lot of that changes how these teams interact, you know as as you know maybe in the first game they go okay we'll play a little bit safe we'll just get some farm you know try and play towards a battle zone but maybe now they go okay this team you know they pick up this meteorite maybe we can look to contest them i think our, our comp is stronger here uh and speaking mm -hmm. of comps uh we might see some comp changes as well do you want to maybe touch upon that uh we could possibly uh i don't think we'll see maybe many comp changes until like game three when they can decide to switch out a member i think that's when we'll see a lot of big changes coming out but i know some of these players could definitely switch some stuff around. I mean, we've seen like Lily Petal's team switch to like Bernice uh, a little bit. And I think they were practicing some Vanya as well. Uh, the team of Kitty King and Swag, the team Kui, I don't think they'll make any changes because they did win their first game, but I know that they have a lot of different picks kind of floating around on what they could do. Uh, Kitty King could definitely like swap off of the Jenny if they so feel, but I mean, she's in a pretty good spot. So I don't think he will be making any changes, especially after their first game win. Uh, homeless laptops, I mean, they could definitely flex, uh, different carry with Jast if they so choose. I mean, you know, Gemos is kind of an Ava one trick, but they can definitely flex a little bit more with Jast and what they want to do. Same thing with Cairo if they want to go with a different tank, but I mean, their game went pretty well. They just unfortunately got the three team final zone, which all kind of came down to the timer. Unfortunately, they couldn't kill anyone fast enough to get more timer. Yeah, I think kind of like you said, I was really interested to see that none of those three teams in the final zone of factory opted to even look hospital, you know, mm -hmm. homeless laptop set on the left side, they just opted to, you know, take sniper shots with Katja as they could. Uh, I think no flame maybe had the best reason for staying there as they did have control of that kind of middle zone. Obviously, team eight wafflers was kind of stuck in the corner. But yeah, just really interested that they opted to go for a 3p kind of cluster mess of a final zone as opposed to maybe taking like a clean 1v1 up there mm -hmm. in hospital but maybe they just decided you know our team comp doesn't fight well into that or they just look really strong with a lot of rng but yeah definitely interested to see how these final zones kind of play out now again we did mention this is new from the last two days the most recent patch uh these teams only have had you know two days to practice i do believe we had two nights of scrims for the na server so a mm -hmm. little bit of practice there as well but you know these teams very much feeling it out figuring out what they like to do what their team comps excel at and how those work for them yeah and it looks like we do have the scores available as well so we can quickly run through those for you guys here that are watching so you can kind of see where everyone is placed because i mean we didn't even really keep track i mean us as casters i mean there's so many kills going around i couldn't even like keep track and kind of guess who was going to be the top so surprisingly we actually have no fame being in first here because they have more total kills uh they will be at 17 points with Kui being in second with 17 points as well 
uh, Homeless Laptops with 11 and the Kaniacs following suit with 5, as well as Envoys of Hell having 5 as well, but because they have less kills, they're going to be in 5th. Uh, Wafflers with 3 points, Bloodsports is 2, and unfortunately, Bra will be in last is 0 as of right now. But I mean, hey, as we always say, that is the first game, so this is kind of when they get to feel everything out and see how it's going to go. As we do go into game 2 here, and we'll get to see if any of those changes do happen. Yeah, as we pull up, it does look like I'm seeing a lot of the same team comps. Uh, the only recognizable, uh, or rather unrecognizable team comp, uh, Waffler is down there. Team 8, it does look like they're playing at the Isaac, Sis, and Kiara. Uh, very interesting, very different from how they played the first game, as that was the Marcus, uh, Elena, and I believe Arto. So, yes. completely different team comp there. It does like every other team is remaining on that same picks as they chose. Don't see any different augments. I do believe same thing with tactical skills. Pretty much looking the same to me. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these teams, you know, didn't, I mean, a lot of it, it wasn't really that bad. Like, I mean, it wasn't anything that they're like super lost at or anything like that. There's just, you know, a lot of it could have been unfortunate circumstance and it is first game. So, you know, a lot of that could have been nerves. We don't really know. Uh, but it looks like, yeah, our team of Wafflers is going to opt to change it a bit here. They will have a Soul Stealer on their side as well with Isaac. So that's going to help them with their engage or disengage, which will be really helpful because as we all know, Kiara and Isaac are characters that really just kind of want to dive. And once they're in there, like they are in there. There's no way that they are getting out. <laughs> uh, but Snowy's will be able to help assist with the Cicela, you know, getting the pull to help start fights as well. So it's not really only up to the Isaac or the Kiara to start the fight. They have a lot of different ways to do so. Yeah, something else interesting to note that I, I picked up on, the Jenny on Kitty Kang for Team Kui is running a Sentinel that was recently buffed as well. Just a little bit of shielding for them. I guess opting in to have less damage overall, you know, they do have that Razi pumping out absolute massive amounts of damage. And even the Yugi ult, you know, does do a lot of percent max HP. So maybe opting to just keep their team alive a little bit more. They can play a little bit more fluidly. You know, Jenny is a very hard character to kill and she is constantly poking. So she will constantly be procking that as well. Just giving them a lot of value. And obviously, you know, it worked for them in the first game. So why why change it if it ain't broke? Yeah, for sure. I mean, all of these other teams are thinking the same thing. I mean, like we said, no other changes coming around here. Uh, I want to see more out of the team of Bra with Christian Rush 7 Strike. I mean, we kind of touched on it earlier that these are players I've been playing for a long time, but they really haven't had their chance to shine in the first game. And we've definitely seen them do some pretty crazy things with the Nathapon ulti. Uh, so I want to see if they're able to do a little bit more here in game two and get some of those early kills with the F-stop, because I think that is where their team comp really shines. They can side up with that and get a good Hyunwoo wall stun to kind of delete someone. And they also have the Theodore to, you know, get a lot of burst damage off of it as well. Yeah, I feel like a lot of where this team excels is playing aggressively, you know, with that Nathapon ult, like you said, but also with the Theodore ult. Um, they were looking really, really aggressively towards that team fight in Forest, and they didn't rip either one of those. It kind of looked like they were... They were they're posturing aggressively to fight, but they weren't willing to use any resources. So I was kind of mm -hmm. I was kind of perplexed by that. So hopefully we see them get it together, find something that works for them, maybe get some nice combos with those ults. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit of looting here, a little bit of crafting, chocobo yao, with that nice new Theodore skin, looking very fly, very swag, uh, <laughs> and he has a nice little pizza in the inventory to cook. We love the pizza. Yeah. Uh, nothing else really. I mean, stood out. I mean, I did see the Laura actually doing a lot of work uh, in game one. Uh, the defense shred from her calling card is definitely very, very useful, especially to a lot of these team comps that have like a dedicated tank. I mean, you have No Flame with uh, Gobu being on the Alonzo. We have Blood Sports as well, as we do have some early fighting going on here. Cairo and Jazz finding Annalise in Hotel. Gonna be pushing them out here, not gonna get the kill though, unfortunately. They are just kind of dubbing this their zone. They are gonna have to be careful though. Lily Petal is in the area, not full build yet though, as Gemma's gonna recognize that they are gonna get some poke out, but gonna get knocked up here by Lockney. Yeah, speaking of tanks, I did want to mention that half of these teams in the lobby do have a very dedicated tank role. I believe that's No Flame, Bloodsports, Kaniac, and Homeless Laptops, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking of No Flame, Superior getting caught out a little bit, Bowser getting all that damage in on the Razi, taking her down, and Sua will be dead for a little bit longer. Eclipse getting caught out here a little bit, but actually, no, he has Delinko as backup as they do go on Kitty Kang. Kitty Kang getting oh taken gosh. down to the Jenny passive. Can, can Jenny make it out? It looks like the Blink used pretty effectively, and that just might be okay for Kitty Kang. Should hit this B gate here, and we'll be okay to live another day. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be enough for Kitty Kang to get out. A lot of team fights happening all at once here, as you can do see Lockney oh, oh. almost fell to the Hex, but Eden Chan is gonna be on the chase. They should have their dash up in a couple seconds here, I believe, which should get the kill on Lockney. Castling, unfortunately, not gonna go over the wall. So there's gonna be another kill going over to Wafflers. A lot of fights early, like we did talk about, a lot of these teams are grouping to get these early fights in while they can without really no consequence. Yeah, I think 
you know, just as you mentioned, the no consequence part, you know, these these early fights are pretty low commitment as long as you have someone who has some form of escape or, you know, position safely to, you know, make sure they don't get full eliminated. Going for these early fights can be really beneficial for these teams, you know, stacking early credits, getting those kills, a little bit of mastery as well. So I like to see, uh, you know, we talked about last game, these teams grouping up early and I'm pretty sure every single team is grouped up with their respective team. Just farming out a little bit of the map, getting a feel for it. Uh, looks like the Nadine will pick up that mute chicken hurt, but we do see Cairo full engaging here, missing the taunt on Idanchan. Looks like Idanchan and Reiki are going to turn here. Reiki in the Kiara ult, it is ticking down. He is chasing that Mai. Snowy's on the backside, uh, getting a lot of damage on Jazz, and Jazz goes to down. Uh, nice yeah. little pickup from them. Kiara just, you know, tanking up with that ult, being a little bit of a nuisance. Unfortunately, yeah, the pull did hit Jazz there. His E wasn't enough to get him out of that situation and no exclusive to actually get him out. So he's going to fall, but that's fine. Like we said, you know, no consequences in the early parts of the game can kind of test out their damage, see who they can eliminate early if they so choose, and then just kind of go around and do their thing. Flames of Wrath is going to actually go for an aggressive Whoa. splash over the wall. Calling card, unfortunately, is not going to land those. He does get stunned as well by the Queen here. A lot of damage going on to Annalise from Yaoi here. He's going to pop the ulti to try to stay alive longer. Q3 is going to hit, but now there's a bear actually in the way, but the Duende is going to keep him alive a little bit longer, but will be falling down here. Two members actually down, one from each team, as there is a third party right above them. Lilypetal now, unfortunately, going to be falling. That is me, Kaniax, actually falling here in night one as a quest. Still hungry for more as the Linko is going to rip the reign of the Vampire Queen. Are they going to get two teams eliminated here? And it does not look like that will be happening as our Laura is able to escape, recognize the third party, and is out of there. Oh, you hate to see it, the team. You know, they do trade one for one, but they just get the unlucky side of getting chased into another team. Uh, hopefully they can make a comeback late in the series. But let's get a quick map check, see where these teams are spread out. Looks like we do have two teams in that beach hotel area, each opting to take their own. Does look like Team Kui will pick up that temple tree. Uh, a little bit of farm happening here, but yeah, just a little bit of a, a slowed down pace. Uh, Bloodsport's looking to get those mutant wolves at archery, as Eclipse loves to do. He loves to farm, as we know. Nice little infusion of credits here. We'll have to see if they use it to call in some credits here after, get some RNG before the battle zone, and see what they can do with it. Yeah, it's kind of like a repeat of game one. We kind of talked about how every team just kind of like went to their designated like RNG spot, and yeah, like they all just kind of got it. Nothing really happened. No one really fighting over it, so they were able just to pick that up with ease and kind of move on with their day to go to these other farming locations. Uh, it looks like everyone's pretty spread out on the map as well, so you're not going to see a lot going on yet. This is going to be the time for the teams to get their call-ins as well, especially before battle zone. Uh, so they're strong and can get their win there, because as we've talked about in the past, like losing the battle zone can be really detrimental. Uh, it can really slow down your tempo in the mid game. Yeah, and you know, we have seen this meta kind of develop in the North American scene. You know, a lot of these teams uh, opting for small calls before the battle zones to potentially snowball it. Speaking of snowball, we do see Gobo trying to engage with that Alonso getting in there. Milanzo, Miton, he is trying to soak up all the damage, but Yuki with a huge cut on the backside. Gobo is going to go down, and that is a one for one, but Kitty King playing aggressively. Superior and Frankie might have to back up. I do believe Kitty King has Moto Helm already, so looking pretty strong on the Jenny. They are trading blows. Frankie trying to heal it up. They might potentially get this res on Swag. Kitty Kang trying to do their best to zone it out. Superior looking in, but Bao actually going aggressively, but Frankie interrupting the dash. Bao with an amazing blink backwards, and it does look like Frankie will be on top of it, and he will be healing up Superior, and it looks like he might just have to back up off this fight. Kitty Kang getting dangerously low and does go down. Bao does have ult around the backside, does shoot it out, but is going to opt to run away, and they are going to live with their lives, but hey, that's a win for no Flynn. Yeah, that was really close, Kitty Kang. Definitely playing aggressively. I'd say shit on Jenny, still having that passive available, so trying to just zone or time for Bowser to heal up, but unfortunately they just aren't able to close in on Superior here. So much damage, and Frankie just having so much healing for him already as well. So it's a little bit hard to take out the dynamic duo as we're so used to seeing it happen here. We do have 13 seconds before our battle zone spawn. Uh, if we can take a quick peek at the map here, it looks like we have two teams at least in one, and actually two teams posturing over one of the alphas here in stream as well, which is a little bit of a surprise because Ali is completely free. Yeah, it uh, looks like we are going to see a little bit of a tussle here between Envoys of Hell, and I believe that is Bra. Ooh, there we go. We're talking about it. The Nathapon ult does catch one out, but can they follow up? And Nathapon does miss his abilities just a little bit, so that ult will be down for the foreseeable future. Looks like Theodore does hit a triple man E. See if they follow up on it. Looks like Christian is looking to get the engage, but just trying to soak up the timer. Arch Demon of Hell on that side being so annoying with that Chloe just around the wall, but is going to get engaged on and slammed into the wall. Can they finish it off? Chloe not able to ult, does go down, and will Flames of Wrath be able to carry? But Flames does look like he's going to go down as well. Yeah, we can. You do it. Camilo Duende, 1v3. It's not enough. 
They did show, yeah, that was like an interesting spot for the Chloe to be hiding and unfortunately just is getting one shot by the Hyunwoo, the classic flash into wall stun combo here. Not enough time, but oh, Jimmy, you're gonna go on the aggressive here. It's gonna get a lot of damage onto Ida and Shen. Reiki getting a little bit low on the Kiara, but that shield is gonna help out a lot. The stasis will come out to kill some more time. Hachimi is being taken up by Ida and Shen as well. This team is actually doing so much damage. Delinko is gonna have to try their best to get out of this one. If you don't know how his teammate is doing, Delinko down. Is Ida and Shen going on the chase to Eclipse? Is this gonna be another team eliminated? Eclipse has to do his best to run out of this one, but is gonna get grabbed. But Ida and Shen gonna kill enough time for his team to catch up. This Acelopole will hit. So that will be the team of Blood Sports being eliminated now here in night two. Yeah, really well played there by Wafflers. You know, they did put a lot of pressure on the opposing team. To leave Snowy's kind of alone on that Tessella, able to do whatever she wanted. And we did see her, in fact, do what she wanted. She did pick up that early kill on the Linko. You know, that Sis pull, just like you were talking about in pregame, you know, really sets up a lot of these fights, lets them follow up with damage, follow up with additional CC. So, you know, a lot of that onus kind of falling on Sis, and, you know, it worked out for them. Yeah, I'm definitely able to do it at a safe space as well. And, you know, I'm surprised, like, they're able to go into these fights and fight about pretty- Oh my gosh, Chocobo, yeah, not in a good spot, being a little too close. As Gobu is actually gonna go into Christian Rush here, who's gonna CC immune, but he's gonna be taking a lot of damage from Super, is gonna have to flash out. The F-stop does hit on one of them, but Frankie is gonna be able to take out Christian Rush here, unfortunately. Super gonna go on the aggressive. It's gonna hit the flash here, but he does get rooted by Chocobo Yao. Seven Strike trying their best as the ulti is gonna come out doing a lot of damage, but unfortunately, Chocobo Yao just not able to do enough as his team is so strong already and healthy as Frankie is gonna try to look for Seven Strike here. Does Seven Strike sneak out of this one? This is so scary for him. He has to try to avoid this team and possibly any other ones in the area. Luckily, you know, the cams do not reveal the whole map. So he is able to hopefully walk out of this one or hide in this bush. Frankie has no idea. Oh my god, I was so scared for a second. <laughs> Seven Strike was turning back, trying to do damage with the Theodore, and I thought Frankie was going to follow up on that little moped and just kill him. But, uh, ooh, lucky for them. Just a little bit of bush sit. Stay a little quiet as all the RNG gets taken. No flame. Picking up that stream tree and also the purple box in the cemetery, so they should be looking pretty good. It does actually look like Christian did self res. Uh, it was before day three, so he would have res anyways, but just a nice little icing on the cake. Yeah, he was able to self res here. I think. I don't remember if the Theodore fell before day two or not. Oh, he is reviving an alley. So yeah, he did fall before the uh, the self reses were gone. So he is up as well, but unfortunately, did not. Going to his teammate, which I find a little bit odd. Maybe he thought this meteorite was free, I'm not sure, but it looks like the team of Fui will be the ones to be picking it up here. But his teammates will be following here shortly. If we do have a lull in the moment, I'd love to see the items. Uh, I did not realize that Theodore has four items. Superior Frankie completely decked out Gobu with one of his own. Chocobo Yao looking pretty strong with four and two more for his team. The rest of the team's looking a little bit low, but it does look like Noclaim is going to be chasing over here. Envoys of Hell running for the jump pad. They should make it out of here, no problem, unless some craziness happens. But not. <laughs> Frankie opted to back up. Just getting the healing going. But yeah, going back to the items, does look like Homeless Laptops has a couple RNG for themselves. Uh, the My items coming in strong. Does look like Team Kui, Kitty Kang actually with four RNG for themselves as well, looking very strong. Uh, Envoys of Hell, a little bit here and there, nothing too crazy. And same with Wafflers. Uh, getting there, but nothing too crazy. I think for sure, No Flame looking the strongest in the lobby. You know, Super and Frankie fully decked out. And we might see a little bit of a fight here as well. Uh, no Flame pulling up on Homeless Laptops, but opting to go away. Maybe looking for this Omega spawn instead. Superior leading the charge with the TP. And it does look like Omega in Police Station contested a little bit, potentially by these four teams. Yeah, it looks like Kui was taking the chance as well to get some of their call -ins. So they will be a little bit stronger now for this fight here for the Alpha if, or the Omega if they so do choose to go for it with two other teams in the area. Uh... It'll be a little bit messy. I mean, this, like, Omega spawn is always a little awkward. It's, like, in the corner. <laughs> There's people that can cover both sides. There's a lot, of, a lot of people. I was just going to mention that. You yeah. Know, pretty much any direction you come from, you can get attacked from behind, except for that one area where No Flame is, you know? They are pretty safe with their backs to the wall. But if there are a lot of teams pushing on them, you know, they do have to go red. So, very dangerous Omega. It does look like No Flame should pick it up, no problem. Uh, and, hey, look at this new kiosk, Lucy. Oh my gosh, yes, this new kiosk is still getting good use from the team of Envoys of Hell. They did call quite a bit from there. They actually did a lot of call-ins recently. Like, I know their Camilla at one point had like 500 credits, and so they called it a force core. Uh, looks like our Laura is getting one online as well. The team of Kui in the area. Will they see each other here? Envoys of Hell gonna have to be a little bit careful as they are getting sandwiched between two teams, but it looks like they might be taking the jump pad over, so they should be in a little bit better of a spot. Hopefully the Lord doesn't get caught here. It's gonna instantly flash, does not want to get caught out by Swag here with the Swag Yuki skin. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna walk away. 
Uh, yeah, I was actually a little worried. You know, we did see pings in hospital as well. Looks like Homo Laptops was just clearing up out of oh there. Oh my god! Are all kind of converging here on the bridge. Uh, looks like No Flame is gonna. Ooh, Bowser blinking out of that Alonso oh, engage, but it does look like they might run into this other team, or they might just make it out by the skin of their teeth. Oh, it's a little bit tension. I oh, can see Super is still going. Gonna get out. Yeah. No Flame really looking for this fight. Kitty King getting a huge ult to back them up, but they are taking a lot of damage. Kitty King did get hit by that spare tire. Superior dashing forward. Frankie on that bike. They are going to chase. Frankie does catch up. He does hit a slow. Kitty King trying to run. Does get hit by one more tire. Getting dangerously low. Bowser getting so low. Frankie blinking ahead. Does full engage on Bowser, and Bowser will go down. No Flame relentless in their chase. Yeah, they do recognize that they're just such a strong team. It's actually do get engaged on Gobu. They get a job by Cairo here. A lot of damage coming out from Gemma. So unfortunately, not enough to take out Gobu. And now they're oh. going to have to back up. Jazz taking so much damage from the Sua Qs here. Now they are going to have to heal up. It looks like they are just going to back out. Unfortunately, not enough damage to one-shot the tanky Alonzo yet. But they have been able to do it before. They just need a couple more items in their inventory. Yeah, I think Homeless Laptop still had vision of that zone, so they did see a lot of that chase happening. Uh, potentially disastrous for No Flame, but they do make it out. Gobu just tanky enough to live, but let's see if we get a rematch. Swag, don't check the bush. Oh no, they didn't see Kitty King getting engaged by Frankie. Frankie doing so much damage. Kitty King being forced into passive, and Bowser is looking like he is down as well. Yuki trying to stall, trying to take up as much time as he can so the Jitty can live, and Swag is going to get taken down over here in red. Might lose timer, and will lose his life. Christian actually being chased as well here by Reiki. He's actually going to turn around. Did they lose a member? Yes, it looks like they did lose Chocobo Yao. So these two are just riding it out, trying to stay safe. Seven Strike going to have to be a little bit careful in this corner as he does recognize there's a team in Chapel. Is going to just hide in this corner though. Luckily, able to get out of this one. Maybe we'll see their teammate teleport to them, but they're both kind of in an awkward spot, completely surrounded uh, by three teams here as Wick is going to be spawning in Cemetery this game. I don't know how these two are going to rat it out. I'm going to be honest. No, Jenny Jenny teleported to Uptown to try and get this res here, trying to get some farm, but it looks like everyone's a little rat trying to get their res going. I don't think Kitty King has enough credits. About 50 off. They should be okay. They do have another night cycle for uh, night four to get those credits, uh, so they should get the res off. But Christian uh, might get caught out here by the Wafflers looking for some blood, uh, actually opting in to just hang out in the bush. They're just going to wait. Maybe they find the Envoys of Hell, or maybe they find Kitty King here. But it looks like they might be going on the outside of the bus, so they should be okay. It's a little bit scary. They do probably hear the sounds as we do see two teams deciding to fight off in Cemetery here to try to get the Wick. Both of our strongest teams actually being these two in this area. He's going to use the E-Shift to dodge the first Q and able to get a little bit more damage out. Sniper Skill is going to come out to scout out to see where they are. Knight is upon them, which is a little bit weaker for this team. I mean, it's going to be really hard for this Katya to do damage when, you know, they have no vision. As Gemlos is going to get quite a bit of damage on Super here, able to poke them to the other side of the wall here. Cairo is just going to have to play safety, just kind of keeping his team safe and at bay as Wick walks around here. This is a little bit scary. I would not want to be the team of homeless laptops trying to fight this at night. Yeah, it's really tense, but, uh, you know, I do believe we are seeing... Oh, we are seeing an engage is what I was going to say. Flim's right, please, please engage in lower, but he does get pulled in. E. Dantron trying to do so much damage. Meowie trying to get on the back line. Snowy's does get an ult off untouched so far, but E. Dantron does go down. Can Reiki and Snowy's do it? It is a 2v3. They are looking to potentially run, oh but gosh. they're actually getting third party on the backside, too. Uh, bro, Theodore ulting in. Snowy's is going to get caught out. Blinking away. Christian Rush blinking forward. Snowy's does go down. And Ricky is the only one remaining. But we might see another part of the fight here. Christian Rush getting oh. pegged in his own teammates. Oh, a little unfortunate. But I think both teams opting to back up and just take the little wins they got. Uh, and on the other side, Wick, we is getting pulled into pawn by Kyra Shoot and Homeless Laptops. A lot of damage being taken. What I was going to say right before all this happened was we actually are seeing one of the big benefits of picking that Sylvia pick, or Sylvia pick rather. You know, she is healing up Gobu and Superior. No matter how much damage they take, no matter how much poke they take, they can just back up and look. Frankie's got them full healed. Meanwhile, Cairo and Gem are pretty low having to maybe rest up, chuck some food, and it just makes this fight a lot more perilous for them. This is so scary. Like, it's like whoever gets the wick is going to be the one that might win, but also, like, Frankie and Super have done this so many times, and they just try to get this wick, and they are not scared to flash on you at any given moment. So it's a little bit scary as they do take, pick up the wick here. Jazz trying to get as much poke damage as they can, but it looks like they are just going to walk out this time and not decide to go on the aggressive, which is a little bit unusual. Like, you're so used to seeing them poke at this wick, and the instant wick is taken, they just, like, both flash on the carry and instantly <laughs> kill them. But they decided to play it safe this time around, and they will be the ones getting the wick and the items, so they're going to be sitting in a better spot here for final zone when that decides to pop. As you do see two, three, two, yeah, three teams actually posturing in Uptown here. Snowy's team was able to get the res actually after both of their teammates fell, but they do 
get found here in the sh in the house. You know, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've seen wafflers in this position before. You know, taking sniper shots from yes! one side, being kicked <laughs> on the other, kind of crazy. Um, it's like a it's like deja vu. <laughs> you know, something they could do. I'm not I'm not you know advocating for it. There is a new jump pad that does lead to warehouse. It would be you know super red, but it is an <laughs> option for them that is new. But we do see actually four teams converging here. Flames of Wrath on that Laura. Getting a little bit of poke on that console. They said, I don't care. Your card? I, what card? God, they are just waiting it out. Oh, S-Top oh. is going to go out. Get a catch, two of them. This is what we've been talking about since the beginning of the game. The big damage coming out from Chocobo Yao here. Eden Chen trying to get on Chocobo Yao, but unfortunately the 3P is coming out. Reiki going to try their best to take someone out, but they weren't able actually to get them. Eden Chen is going to be the one to follow Chocobo Yao, trying to keep Christian Rush as healthy as possible, but is just going to walk away from this one. And it looks like... The team of Kui actually being the victors of being the 3P this time around. And when we finally saw what we wanted to happen, happen is Chocobo Yao now, unfortunately, going to be taken out by Envoys of Hell. They finally got their hero play, but unfortunately, <laughs> too many teams in the area, and they will be the ones to fall. Oh, no, and no flame pulling up. They said, I smell fighting. I want a piece. I've got wick. I'm here to party. Uh, we do see Wafflers down. Remember, they are routing in that very top little corner of Uptown. Uh, unfortunately for Bro, they did go down. They were 3Ping, but they ended up being taken down. Just a little bit of riding here. Nice little ghost hand on the ground. Superior said, I don't need that. No one else can use it. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that. Get rid of that one for now. It's, yeah, they are going to, looks like, go into chapel this time around. Team of homeless laptops is going to be in the area. It's going to get some last minute crafts off. Superior does recognize them in the area. And the team of Kui also up here as well. Gemos is going to see them. going to try to get some poke out. I mean, this is a little bit harder of a team for Kui to really fight. Uh, Cairo being on that Mai is really, really helpful against their team because they're all a lot of auto attack damage. So being able to use the W to kind of uh, prevent that from happening, he's going to be really tanky against these guys. So it might be a team that they don't want to fight. Uh, but I could see the team of Homeless Laptops trying to force this as it is a team they will want to take out since it is a little bit easier for them to deal with. And you can see that they are going to keep on getting vision of them in the area. But fortunately, they don't really have a good way to like engage except for with Cairo Jest. Gonna try his best to get some poke out. Do they know that Kitty King is in the corner though is the question. <laughs> yeah, actually speaking of, uh, I did want to mention, I think we cast our curse at these teams. We do have the same final five teams. Uh, the <laughs> same three teams going out as last game. Uh, so a little bit unfortunate for them. And speaking of unfortunate, Wafflers is found out. Spread out, run away. Can one of us live? Looks like Snowy is gonna be the one to get out of there. And no flame pick up nice little couple kills for themselves. Flames of Wrath hiding in the corner of the Envoys of Hell. It does look like we are going to see no flame kind of in uptown. We'll have to see if they opt in to just take the zone or if they want more kills. We are going to see another three teams contesting for this final zone over here. No flame posturing to potentially look, but I think they're probably going to duke it back up. Looks like homeless laptops learning from last time. They said, hey, we got forced out last time. We're going to take control of the zone. We've got traps. We've got cameras. What else can we do? Uh, looks like Envoys of Hell getting some really last minute calls. They only have 10 seconds until the zones start closing in. I'm not sure if this is a play, but I mean, if it gets them a little bit stronger for the fight, maybe it is correct. And three, Ooh. two, one, Lucy, here we go. I was so scared. Yeah, this is so crazy that these teams are so much more spread out. This is just allowing homeless laptops to win off of timer alone. So they just need to recognize that as Snowy's unfortunately getting found. So they're going to take this free kill on them as Kui decides to push into the zone. Snowy's falling any second here, but this is almost detrimental. Like, yeah, they get the kill. But, I mean, they have no timer, and neither does the team of Kui, which these two are just going to have to fight, and Reddit looks like here. Who's going to get the kills? The triple knockup is going to happen. There's so much going on. The Yuki ult is hit, and now Bowser are going to fall down in any second as well. You can barely even tell who's getting the kills, as the timer is going to go over to Envoys of Hell, which is good for them to be able to try to push in this final zone. But how do you push into a Katja and an Ava? They do so much damage from afar, and Cairo just able to be the force in the middle, as they do miss a knockup, unfortunately, the... Lower alt is going to go out, but it will not be enough as Jess is able to stay a little, a little bit longer thanks to Cairo. Gemos is still alive as well. Jess actually going to be taken down by the Chloe here, but now they have the issue of their teammates exploding. Cairo is just going to go in to stop them from killing Jess, but unfortunately Jess will fall down, which is going to leave this final team in a 2v3 against Super. Oh my gosh, Envoys of Hell deciding the game. They said if you're going to take us down, we're going to take one of you with us. Really unfortunate for Homeless Laptops. And this should just be no flame kind of cleaning it up. Unless by some miracle, Gem can one shot, you know, three characters, including a tank Alonso with spell shield. Uh, you know, <laughs> should be I... a little formality. 
Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. They did just grief Jeff's body completely. They said, well, okay, you guys won, but you know, we'll make sure you guys don't get the win here as No Flame <laughs> is going to be the ones to come in. Jemmo still does have a lot of AoE, but I mean, like, what do you do when two of their carries can just flash on you? Alonzo is going to go right onto Cairo, and they're just going to try to one-shot him. As you can see, that did happen. Jemmo, unfortunately, could try his best, but not enough damage coming out, but a lot actually coming out onto Frankie, but not enough to take him out here as No Flame will be our winners of game two. Yeah, no flame, you know, getting revenge for that first game. They said, hey, we got this. And actually, we get a nice little Sua, Sua beach skin show off on that nice little cutscene at the end. Congrats to no flame and superior. But yeah, you know, superior getting really close on last game. The first game, you know, they did take that little short victory cemetery, but it wasn't quite enough to take the win. They do have a nice little finish here. And I think in both games, we did see the final team being left alone in the final zone, getting a little bit of an edge for that final little bit. You know, they kind of just sat around looking pretty, waiting for something to happen. All the other teams are fighting for their lives. 3P, 4P, uh, a little crazy yeah. with this apple, but you know. Yeah, it's actually crazy. Like, chasing the kill onto Snowy is kind of put them in a bad spot because then they're losing way more timer, chasing into another zone. And then they all fought in red. And all of a sudden, Jass is getting, like, griefed in the zone because they're yeah. trying to, like, just out-timer them. <laughs> and then it just gave No Flame the win. It's just these, like, timer changes and the new final zones are actually so crazy. And it, it keeps happening that we keep having three teams in one area. It's yeah. like... They, the zones get designated and they're like, man, I don't want to take the trek to the other zone. Let's just try to like take our chances with this one. And then one team just gets their zone for free. It's kind yeah. of crazy. Still really surprised that none of these teams, you know, opting to go for that kind of clean 3v3 and uptown against no flame. I know that they have wick, they have max items. I know that team's pretty scary to fight. So I guess these mm -hmm. teams opting for potential kills more. Um, I think that that was mostly uh, these teams' idea of what they wanted to do. We did see the Laura and the Camilla both blinking after Snowy's after she went into Cemetery to try and secure that kill. And I think pretty much when you use that much of your resources, you're kind of resignating yourself to kind of, you know, just play for kills, play for maybe a placement, but not winning the game. And I think, you know, when you get to that point in the game where you you kind of look at, you know, the other team's strength, your team's strength in the final zones, you know, where all these teams are, that mm -hmm. is a good play to make. You know, you could get zero points trying to, you know, win the game, or you could get, you know, like two, three, four, five points, try to get some kills. And I think it worked for them. They got a couple more kills than they otherwise would have. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, they're definitely just playing for the points at that point. And, you know, again, so many teams just fell early. I mean, we saw one team get third partied, unfortunately, in the beginning. The team of Lily Petal getting third partied in, I believe it was almost next. It was almost in school, like right next to school. Um mm -hmm. They tried to get, they got, they got what, one for one. And then unfortunately, Clesp team was right there and got the three piece there. Uh, then Nadine never got a chance to scale. So unfortunately, they fell really early. And then we had two teams fall even like close after that, like in the next night cycle. So the yeah. mid game is kind of really quiet, surprisingly. Like these teams just keep on fighting and fighting. And unfortunately, the three piece keep happening too soon and then they do fall. Yeah, I think that's, you know, we talked about the fluidity of teams, you know, what these teams are looking for in the fights. And when you have a team that's comprised of Lennox, Jan, and uh, Bianca, you mm -hmm. kind of understand that you're taking a big risk. You know, you might have very strong all-in. You have a very good team comp. You're all synergized together. You know, you're going in together as a team. Uh, but the one downside is if something does go wrong, as we did see in Beach, that team is kind of left uh, to die. The Lennox doesn't really have a way to escape from the other teammates. The Bianca typically uses her dash in. Same with the Yan. So see if this team, you know, changes it up, maybe fixes what their comp might be missing or just pick some smarter fights. But definitely looking for that team to see what they can change uh, coming into game three here. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, that's... They're going to have a lot of time, you know, to talk about it if they'd like uh, when we have a break here soon. Uh, they can kind of talk about what they want to switch around or if they want to sub in their fourth member. I mean, there's a lot of different ways they can kind of change their game plan here. It was a little unfortunate that, yeah, they fell in Beach. And unfortunately, like you said, that Lennox has no way to get away, especially with, uh, I mean, against, what was it, the Isaac and the Cicela. There's really no way to get out of that. I mean, you have to dodge assist pull. You have to dodge the pull from Isaac. You have to be fast enough to get away from Isaac because he's dashing to everything. I mean, there's so many things that you have to get away from. And unfortunately, Lennox just not tanky enough to get out of that situation and to keep their teammates safe. And but well, we saw like another 3P as well in Uptown with yeah. Kokomo Yao and them. Like we finally got to see their moment. They got the two-man <laughs> F-stop into the giant ulti into the three piece. So unfortunately they're the ones to fall. And again, it's just another unfortunate circumstance for them. Like they finally got their moment and it just actually wasn't their moment at all. Yeah, I did want to bring up a point that you did just mention, but I want to clarify for everyone. Uh, with this new tournament, you are allowed to change teammates after game two. So there's game one and two. We will have a short break. Then there will be game three and four. You are allowed to switch out your other player if you'd like, um, but they will have to play for the rest of the game. So they will have to play in game three and four. 
So it could be interesting to see what these teams cook up, see what potential new comps they have. Maybe someone was watching the games and can maybe figure out something that the team could be doing better. But yeah, curious to see if any of these teams take advantage of it. Um, I feel like it's kind of a pro and a con, you know? You have someone who might have, you know, have more information, has a different take on the game, but you do kind of lose a little bit of that synergy, you know? You did just play this game with two people, and when you switch someone out, it kind of changes the dynamic of it. So curious to see if any of these teams switch up. Uh, I know you did mention uh, Wisu might be subbing in for uh, Homeless Lab tops if they decide that that's something they'd like to do but uh, honestly i think their team comp working pretty well you know again with that eva like you said plus the kacha you have two long range kind of poke characters and it's really hard to fight without like a really clean engage mm -hmm. yeah it's really hard for people to fight them but on the counterpoint they don't really have a lot of ways to get in and fight people as well like cairo probably really wants to engage all the time but at the same time he has to be the safety net for his team because you know they are really, really long range, but they also don't have as much escape. At least Jevos doesn't. Uh, the Katra kind of does, and they do have a lot of safety with their bush check, but they are very squishy. So he kind of has to play both sides, putting Kyra in kind of a difficult spot, but he does it very, very well. I mean, as you can see, every time he hit a taunt, I mean, that person just, like, died. Like, they didn't have a chance. Yeah. They were done in a second. So we'll have to see if they decide to change anything around this time. And same thing with the other teams. They got through their first two games, so now is their chance to kind of take a break and see what they would like to do. But before we go on said break, I think we can go through the scores here quick for everyone here. Do you want to take it over? Yeah, I've got this. Uh, we do have in first place No Flame with a nice total of 36 points for themselves. Following it up, we do have Kui in second place with 23 kills. Homeless Laptops running it out in third with 21 points, and Envoys of Hell with 16 points in fourth. Uh, for the bottom side, we do have Wafflers, 13 points, Kaniacs, 7 points, Bloodsports, 6, and Bra 3. Uh, and we did mention, you know, Kaniacs, Bloodsports, they have been going out very early along with Bra, so hopefully they can turn it around here in games 3 and 4, get some points back. Uh, we do have to mention again, the, the, the format for this is they will be playing three weeks of round robins, uh, they will be given an amount of points based on their placement here. So every place matters, you know, even that's, if, if it's from sixth to fifth place, that does change the points a lot. So these teams will be wanting to get as many points as they can here and just try and get the highest ranking on this list as possible. Yeah, for sure. So they, I mean, they have, what, three weeks mm -hmm. uh, to kind of get as many points as they can to get those good placements to get them a good standing uh, by the end of the three weeks, and I know we mentioned it earlier, just but just in case for anyone that wasn't here at the beginning of the cast, uh, it will be the first place team in each block that will be going advancing to the finals right away, and then after that, it'll actually be a wild card, which will be the second and third place teams of each block, and then that wild card will decide who the four teams are going into finals. So a little bit different this time around, uh, but it gives teams, you know, an extra chance to kind of get through the group stages and see if they can get that final stand uh, final chance into the finals as well so a little bit different but a little bit more exciting we get some more games so you know can't go wrong with that yeah and for me you know i definitely welcome this format you know we do um change it a little bit you know last circuit i do believe the top two teams made it out of their group into the finals this time you just have to be in the top three out of four to make it to the next stage so you just basically just don't want to be last in the group and you should have a chance to make it to the finals uh, but with that, we are going to wrap it up here for ourselves. We will be taking a short break here, uh, and we will be back here with Game 3 and Game 4 in just a bit. I, if this team recognizes it. Yeah, I do like this. And again, another small change is after that final zone is broken down, the teams do get a full set of timer to work with. We do see Gobo getting dangerously low. He does ult to stay alive a little bit longer, but Swag is going to take him down. Kitty Kang shooting with that jetty. He does go down superior dangerously low. Looks like Frankie's also down on the bottom side. Kui going two for zero, and this should just be a formality. And Kui looking to finish it off. They are going to take down these bodies. There will be no reses, and this should be a win for them. Frankie trying valiantly to win, but does go down. Oh, Lucy, take it away. Oh, this is actually going to be so scary. I'm surprised, actually, yeah, the team of Reiki here is going to get the zone here. So they're going to be the ones that are getting sandwiched. So these teams need to make a decision. Gobu's team is going to try to poke him out. I mean, Reiki is a low sun oh. type group. As long as they stay in this zone, he is going to explode. And this is just going to be such a mess to look at. Snowy's is going to try to rip the ulti, but unfortunately not going to hit. Eight seconds for the homeless laptops. It looks like No Flame is going to have the most timer. They need to get some kills if they want to stay alive here, but No Flame. Being the ones with the most timer, it looks like it will be their zone to take here as Pyro will be following suit in just a second. Jas trying his best here to get a kill. At least on Goku does get one, but as we just talked about, no flame having the most timer. So they will be the winners of this bottom zone. Look for this angle. Seven Strike probably just trying to look for the F stop angle here as Seven Strike is going to try to get some poke on Cairo, but Cairo just trying to get some distance for his team. It does so much damage from Gemos actually. Christian already half health. 
Is he gonna be able to get him here? He is, and Dremel's gonna use the flash to safety as Pyro is still completely healthy thanks to the exclusive as Jas is gonna go on the aggressive here. Now they just need to take out Chocobo. Yeah, will he get out? Is his passive available here for this bush? Is he able to juke them out? He is not, unfortunately, I don't think, as we do see the cameras coming out, claimers being landed. Is gonna try to see I... if this team recognizes it. Yeah, I do like this. And again, another small change is after that final zone is broken down, the teams do get a full set of timer to work with. We do see Gobo getting dangerously low. He does ult to stay alive a little bit longer. But Swag is going to take him down. Kitty Kang shooting with that jetty. He does go down superior dangerously low. Looks like Frankie's also down on the bottom side. Kui going two for zero. And this should just be a formality. And Kui looking to finish it off. They are going to take down these bodies. There will be no reses. And this should be a win for them. Frankie trying valiantly to win, but does go down. Oh, Lucy, take it away. Oh, this is actually going to be so scary. I'm surprised, actually, yeah, the team of Reiki here is going to get the zone here. So they're going to be the ones that are getting sandwiched. So these teams need to make a decision. Gobu's team is going to try to poke him out. I mean, Reiki is a low sun oh. type group. As long as they stay in this zone, he is going to explode. And this is just going to be such a mess to look at. Snowy's is going to try to rip the ult, but unfortunately not going to hit. I see if this team recognizes it. Yeah, I do like this. And again, another small change is after that final zone is broken down, the teams do get a full set of timer to work with. We do see Gobo getting dangerously low. He does ult to stay alive a little bit longer, but Swag is going to take him down. Kitty Kang shooting with that jetty. He does go down superior dangerously low. Looks like Frankie is also down on the bottom side. Kui going two for zero, and this should just be a formality. And Kui looking to finish it off. They are going to take down these bodies. There will be no reses, and this should be a win for them. Frankie trying valiantly to win, but does go down. Oh, Lucy, take it away. Oh, this is actually going to be so scary. I'm surprised to look for this angle. Seven Strike probably just trying to look for the F-stop angle here. As Seven Strike is going to try to get some poke on Cairo, but Cairo just trying to get some distance for his team. It does so much damage from Gemos, actually. Christian already half health. Is he able to look for this angle? Seven Strike probably just trying to look for the F-stop angle here. As Seven Strike is going to try to get some poke on Cairo, but Cairo just trying to get some distance for his team. It does so much damage from Gemos, actually. Christian already half health. Is he able to get him here? He is, and Gemos is going to use the flash to safety as Cairo is still completely healthy thanks to the exclusive as Jass is going to go on the aggressive here. Now they just need to take about Chocobo. Yeah, will he get out? Is his passive available here for this bush? Is he able to juke them out? He is not, unfortunately, I don't think, as we do see the cameras coming out, claimers being landed. It's going to try to hide in this corner, but unfortunately, it is not going to be the corner to hide in, as it's going to be our next team going out here. Any? Oh. Oh. Wait. Oh. No, he didn't. I sense the presence of an evil spirit. I brought salvation for this poor soul. I'll bring salvation to lost souls as far as my power allows me to. It's time to get started. <laughs> Rescue complete. Back to headquarters. I'm Yuki Sato from Spirit Hunters Japanese Branch. Pleased to meet you. May you finally rest in peace. There are so many possessed people in this place. Purify! Spirits aren't the only things that need rest. Your time among the living is over. There are so many evil spirits. What's going on with this island? I should hold a memorial service. Rescue complete. Back to the headquarters. Oh, Lucy, take it away. Oh, this is actually going to be so scary. Looks like the Nadine will pick up that beautiful chicken hurt, but we do see Cairo full engaging here, missing the taunt on Edanchan. Looks like Edanchan and Ricky are going to turn here. Ricky in the Kiara ult, it is ticking down. He is chasing that Mai. Snowy's on the backside, uh, getting a lot of damage on Jas, and Jas goes to down. Uh, nice yeah. little pick up from them. Kiara just, you know, tanking up with that ult. I see if this team recognizes it. Yeah, I do like this. And again, another small change is after that final zone is broken down, the teams do get a full set of timer to work with. We do see Gobo getting dangerously low. He does ult to stay alive a little bit longer, but Swag is going to take him down. Kitty Kang shooting with that jetty. He does go down superior dangerously low. Looks like Frankie's also down on the bottom side. Kui going two for zero, and this should just be a formality. And Kui looking to finish it off. They are going to take down these bodies. There will be no reses, and this should be a win for them. Frankie trying valiantly to win, but does go down. For small calls before the battle zones to potentially snowball it. Speaking of snowball, we do see Gobo trying to engage with that. Alonso getting in there. Milanzo, meet Tom. He is trying to soak up all the damage, but Yuki with a huge cut on the backside. Gobo is going to go down, and that is a one for one, but Kitty King playing aggressively. Superior and Frankie might have to back up. I do believe Kitty King has Moto Helm already, so looking pretty strong on the Jenny. They are trading blows. Frankie trying to heal it up. They might potentially get this res on Sweat. 
Swag. Kitty Kang trying to do their best to zone it out. Superior looking in, but Bao actually going aggressively, but Frankie interrupting the dash. Bao with an amazing blink backwards, and it does look like Frankie will be on top of it, and he will be healing up Superior, and it looks like he might just have to back up off this fight. Kitty Kang getting dangerously low and does go down. Bao does have ult around the backside, does shoot it out, but is going to opt to run away, and they are going to live with their lives, but hey, that's a win for no Flynn. So Lucy, take it away. Oh, this is actually going to be so scary. I'm surprised, actually, yeah, the team of Reiki here is going to get the zone here, so they're going to be the ones that are getting sandwiched, so these teams need to make a decision. Gobu's team is going to try to poke him out. I mean, Reiki is a low sun type oh. As long as they stay in this zone, he is going to explode. And this is just going to be such a mess to look at. Snowy's is going to try to rip the ulti, but unfortunately not going to hit. Eight seconds for the homeless laptops. It looks like No Flame is going to have the most timer. They need to get some kills if they want to stay alive here, but No Flame being the ones with the most timer, it looks like it will be their zone to take here as Pyro will be following suit in just a second. Jas trying his best here to get a kill. At least on Gobu does get one, but as we just talked about, No Flame having the most timer, so they will be the winners of this bottom zone. Inspiration can be drawn from anywhere. Inspire me. Trust in my vision. Tilt your head for me. I'll leave it on. Looks like the Nadine will pick up that butte chicken hurt, but we do see Cairo full engaging here, missing the taunt on Edanchan. Looks like Edanchan and Ricky are gonna turn here. Ricky in the Kiara ult, it is ticking down. He is chasing that mine. Snowy's on the backside, uh, getting a lot of damage on Jas, and Jas goes to down. Uh, nice little yeah. pickup from them. Kiara just, you know, tanking up with that ult. See I if this team recognizes it. Yeah, I do like this. And again, another small change is after that final zone is broken down, the teams do get a full set of timer to work with. We do see Gobu getting dangerously low. He does ult to stay alive a little bit longer, but Swag is going to take him down. Kitty Kang shooting with that jetty. He does go down superior dangerously low. Looks like Frankie's also down on the bottom side. Kui going two for zero, and this should just be a formality. And Kui looking to finish it off. They are going to take down these bodies. There will be no reses, and this should be a win for them. Frankie trying valiantly to win, but does go down. For small calls before the battle zones to potentially snowball it. Speaking of snowball, we do see Gobo trying to engage with that Alonso getting in there. Milanzo meet Tan. He is trying to soak up all the damage, but Yuki with a huge cut on the backside. Gobo is going to go down, and that is a one for one. But Kitty King playing aggressively. Superior and Frankie might have to back up. I do believe Kitty King has Moto Helm already, so looking pretty strong on the Jenny. They are trading blows. Frankie trying to heal it up. They might potentially get this res on Sweat. Kitty Kang trying to do their best to zone it out. Superior looking in, but Bao actually going aggressively, but Frankie interrupting the dash. Bao with an amazing blink backwards, and it does look like Frankie will be on top of it, and he will be healing up Superior, and it looks like he might just have to back up off this fight. Kitty Kang getting dangerously low and does go down. Bao does have ult around the backside, does shoot it out, but is going to opt to run away, and they are going to live with their lives, but hey, that's a win for no Flynn. So Lucy, take it away. Oh, this is actually going to be so scary. I'm surprised, actually, yeah, the team of Reiki here is going to get the zone here, so they're going to be the ones that are getting sandwiched, so these teams need to make a decision. Gobu's team is going to try to poke him out. I mean, Reiki is a low sun type oh. As long as they stay in this zone, he is going to explode. And this is just going to be such a mess to look at. Snowy's is going to try to rip the ulti, but unfortunately not going to hit. Eight seconds for the homeless laptops. It looks like No Flame is going to have the most timer. They need to get some kills if they want to stay alive here, but No Flame being the ones with the most timer, it looks like it will be their zone to take here as Pyro will be following suit in just a second. Jas trying his best here to get a kill. At least on Goku does get one, but as we just talked about, No Flame having the most timer, so they will be the winners of this bottom zone. Inspiration can be drawn from anywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Eternal Return Challenger series. Uh, we just finished up games one and two. How are you feeling about the first two games, Uzma? Ooh, honestly, they were very exciting. I think the final zone changes were everything we thought they'd be. A lot of carnage, <laughs> a lot of craziness. Uh, a little bit hard to cast, but, you know, that's kind of what we like. But uh, we are going to get here into game three relatively soon. But we are going to go over the scores again, just in case anyone wasn't here. Uh, just to get a refresher. Give these teams a chance to relook at their standings. And here they go. Lucy, do you want to take it away? Yeah, just for like a quick recap for anyone that wasn't here uh, before the break. This is where we're sitting after game two. So as you can see, the teams of No Flame, Kui, Homeless Laptops, and Envoys of Hell will be your top four. And our bottom four will be Wafflers, Zakaniacs, Bloodsports, and Bra. And we do still have two more games following suit. So, I mean, these scores can change pretty dramatically. I mean, you know, anyone can have a huge pop-off game. So they could definitely, you know, go up or down on the scoreboard. But that's just a quick recap for you all. So you know where we're sitting. No Flame's sitting very comfortably in first right now for the time being. But I mean, you know, second and third are pretty close together. Same with fourth or fifth. So you can still see, you know, any of these teams shuffle around after the third or fourth game. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can kind of see, you know, No Flame does have 36 points across two games, you know, so it is possible to get, you know, those 18 points in a single game. Just takes a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill, you know, some good gameplay. But here we go. We are going to get into Champ Select for Game 3. See if anything gets mixed up here. We are seeing a lot of the same, but actually, I think a big change is Homeless Laptops is playing Wisu here instead of Gemo. So we are going to see a team comp change, I'm sure, and also just, you know, a new player change. Yeah, uh, first thing I do want to point out that I just noticed straight away, it looks like we will be having our first ban after this game. We did mention that if any of the teams, if there's three of the same character, they will be banned in the next game going forward. And as you can all see, there are three Jennies in this lobby. Uh, Jast is going to make the change to Jenny. This is what he's been playing with the comp when Wisu is with them. And as you can see, Wisu is out with them. So they did sub him in for the last two games. Uh, Kitty Kang has been playing Jenny this whole time, and then we have Archdemon of Hell as well, swapping over to the Jenny, as well as their teammate Flames of Wrath deciding to swap over to that Fiora. Yeah, I think another important note, uh, a lot of these teams, you know, relatively staying the same comp, a lot of the same characters, but Homeless Laptops has changed up their game plan a lot from what I can tell, you know. They are playing the Bernice and they are playing the uh, Alonso, which is a lot of one-shot potential that I that I imagine, you know. Either, you know, you see Kyra pointing at someone, he goes in, Wisu follows up with an engage, ult of his own, the Bola, and then, you know, Jenny just there for a lot of DPS. Uh, we do see Jazz taking the frailty, unlike these other Jennies, going Sentinel. So, uh, a lot more aggressive play I think these teams can play more aggressively into them as well, you know? But mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I think Homo Laptops will be looking a lot more for those engages, a lot more for those ultimate combinations to get picks. And yeah, we'll just have to see how it plays with them. Again, we talked about, you know, changing up members. It does change the team dynamic, how you guys communicate, how you play the game, how your team plays. So just hopefully they can pull it together, keep it together, get a good showing for themselves, and, you know, just give us a good game. Yeah, I mean, this is the Homeless Laptops that we're used to, though. I mean, we're not used to them being as, like more passive and reserved with an Ava in their team as that's kind of what they have to do. I mean, they have so much like burst potential from afar, but they don't have a lot of chase potential. And you know, this changeup is kind of what we know them as. Uh, they are very, very aggressive in their play. So this is definitely going to show with the characters that they pick this time around. So we'll have to see how their points kind of change around from this time with the characters that they did swap to. Same thing with Envoys of Hell. A couple changes coming around, no longer having the Laura with that defense shred, and no longer having the Chloe as well for some constant DPS, but instead, they're gonna get their constant DPS from the Jenny, which also has really good engage, and same thing with that Fiora. Uh, Fiora being really good with an engage if they're on Rapier, and they are, so they are able to kind of go in with the Ironclad as well to take less damage, so they're gonna be looking way more aggressive this time around as well. Yeah, something that I really appreciate from Envoys of Hell, you know, their team comp is very fluid, they don't have a very set, like, this character does this, and then I follow up with this, and then you do that. It's very much like, hey, anything could happen. You know, Camilla could get a a, a, a good EQ in, Duende all over the back line. Jenny could get a carpet in on someone else. Like, this team could play any kinds of ways. Uh, but one way, it does look like Jenny is going to go down here. That's not the way that they were looking to start the game. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Homeless Laptop still grouping in Hotel, going to be taking down Archdemon of Hell, getting that, you know, quick early kill here. They do group into the zone very early to take the camps as well. So that's going to be them here. It looks like the team of Wafflers is going to be taking over Forest. And I think Kaniacs has been going into Beach, but it looks like they are going to find Lily Petal here. It's going to try to flash out. We still going to flash after them. Are they going to be able to get the last auto? They will not, as Lofty is going to get the knockup combo on Wisu, but Wisu is still healthy enough as Cairo trying to get the point on Annalise, but not able to get it here. They will keep chasing, it looks like, though. Annalise could be trying to use the healing drone to get the healing onto Lily Petal. They are still chasing this, so Jast, I think, does still have Flash available. So if he wants to do something aggressive here, he could, but they will not, as the speed gate is going to get these two to safety. Yeah, I think both game one and two, uh, Kaniacs has been caught up by Homeless Laptops a lot in that Hotel Beach area. I'm really surprised that they haven't switched up uh, their routing or potentially the speed of their builds to try and get something going. Uh, speaking of going, we do see Hachimi trying to kick away. Swag actually getting kicked back to the center, but it looks like Hachimi should make it out. Swag getting a little bit of a wall bonk there, and you can Hachimi getting the speed gate, just eking it out. Lives to tell another story. Uh, speaking of, Flames of Rats is not going to live to tell another story. Should go down here, Christian Rush. Punching him down, but it does look like Meowie gonna get caught in the F stop, but Christian's just running away. Yeah, unfortunately, no more kills coming out of here for that team. Envoys of Hell is gonna get the res on their Fiora to help get the bears here in Warehouse, as Christian is gonna try to get the ones in Dock here. So let's see if he's able to get this. As you see, there's a new jump pad there, so you can take that to the other side of Dock oh, if he does oh. decide to, which he will be doing <laughs> on accident. As the is actually gonna be chasing Chocobo Yao here. It's gonna try to bob and weave. It's gonna get hit by the play though into the whip skill, and that will be enough to be taking them out. So another kill 
for the team of Bloodsport. They've been getting a lot of these early kills, as we've seen in other games, but unfortunately not be able to finish. There's a huge Jenny ult coming out from Jazz. Isn't able to get two of them here. Stasis coming out from the Kiara will not keep them alive, though, unfortunately. So it'll be another kill for them in Hotel, which just kind of seems to be their stomping ground, already getting three kills in the area. Yeah, just like we talked about, you know, this team playing a lot more aggressive. It's a, it's, it's, it's really jarring for, you know, these players in the game, you know. You're used to seeing certain characters or certain team comps, and you kind of understand, like, how they're going to play. And when one team switches a player and just mixes it up, like, it, it's just a very jarring different experience than what you're used to. Speaking of jarring experience, uh, no flame. Finding a team here in Forest, but unfortunately, yep, they're just going to separate. So no drawing experience there, actually. I guess I cast her cursed it. Everyone's just going to go their separate ways, <laughs> get ready for the RNG to spawn. We'll have to see if any differences come out this time around. Uh, now that we do have Wisu in the lobby, is anyone going to try to contest their hotel tree? We'll, we'll have to see possibly another team in the area, as we do have 20 seconds until these RNG do decide to spawn here. Wisu, going to try to go in the aggressive here a little bit. Cairo walking up. This team is just going to kind of walk around, though. They're both posturing. We see setting up the traps here. Yeah, I think something also interesting about this homeless laptop team is, you know, we do see Wisu with that heavy knee pads, a little bit of a shield for him, and a little bit of CC break if he needs it. Oh my gosh. And speaking of CC, Bowser getting absolutely one shot through a whole combo. Christian Rush doing so much damage. Jenny being forced to run, and they should pick up a nice little meter right here. Swag running for the Nathapon should be able to make it out, but actually, Seven Strike tags him with everything, hitting every ability, pulls it back in Swag. Can you make it out? One more dashing gentleman, and he just might make it out. Looks like Seven still wants some. Not yeah, sure if yeah, he's going to catch it. Uh, I can't believe that Rousey got well stunned. That was so close. There's another fight here <laughs> for this hotel tree. Another great ulti from Jask here. He's able to get the charm on Meow. He's just going to take him down really early. We see still healthy enough to keep this fight going. His Archie Moon Hell is going to have to try to walk out of this one. Still having the Jenny ult available, but a third party coming in. Annalise trying to get the kill here. Which team will get it here? Looks like I think it was a team with Lily oh. Unfortunately, Jask getting hit by the entire Adela combo, but does have the Jenny passive available, but not enough to keep them alive. I think his team, though, will still get the tree and be able to walk away from this one. So I think they are the true victors of the hotel tree. <laughs> Yeah, you know, picking up that RNG at the cost of a couple lives, usually a pretty worthwhile investment. 200 credits, nice and free for them. But yeah, you know, we did see Jas kind of playing differently than these other Jennies. was playing very aggressively, dashing forward, using that frailty to shred defense so they could really pick someone down and, you know, just homeless laptops kind of taking away this early game with a lot of kills. Four so far, and we're not even to the battle zones. Yeah, very aggressive indeed. As a, you know, I think it's because Cairo, if I remember right, I think... He usually plays something a little bit different. He's usually on BOT, but I don't think he is this time around. Um, mm. So they don't have a protocol to really have that defense shred. So it's probably why they have Jast on that frailty. So they have a little bit of defense shred on someone, which seems to be very important in the patch right now. You almost see every team with a protocol because it's such a strong uh, tactical skill to have as we do see 30 seconds coming in until the battle zones do pop. We'll see. Oh, uh -oh. have to see if something suspicious is going on here. <laughs> Uh-oh. There it starts. Looks like Wisu trying to get the jump on them. Jazz dashing forward as well, as we said. Did they get the call in? I think they did. I think Swag picked it up. Or did he? I think I see. I saw one on Jenny. Did Yuki get his call? I can't tell. I am not sure, but it looks like... Almost laptops is going to try to get their call quick in before the battle zone. Are they actually trying to go into the battle zone here? No, it looks like they might not. Oh! We oh, too. Is, oh my god, this is making me nervous. No, okay, they decided oh. not to. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, what are you guys doing? A little scary, okay. It does look like we do have Bra in here as well as Kui. See who comes out on top. Christian, he's oh. waiting in the bush. Oh, he does get spotted out. That's the pawn getting caught a little bit by Yuki, but Christian actually saving him with a gun. Oh gun. Swag does get a big cut. Seven actually blinks it away. Christian punching so much damage. Seven Strike is actually still on touch. They could win this fight. Bowser trying to do as much as he can, but does go down. It's a 2v2. But I do believe Seven Strike full HP may be able to clutch it out. Kitty King resting in the bush. Can they get this res? Trucker Boy out trying to heal as much as they can. And it does look like they're going to pick it up. So this should wow. be a nice little one battle zone for them. Kitty Kang going down as well. Yeah, very well played. I thought Nathapon was going to go down, but Christian with a huge wall stun to keep the Yuki off his Nathapon. Uh, they're also... I, I don't know where they're going. Wait, are they losing? Oh, uh, Swag is in Wait, the they're, bottom. Wait, they're exploding. Yeah, Swag Wait. is in the bottom zone. Oh. Wait, uh, I, hello? <laughs> yeah, they all fought without uh, being in the... Uh... In the thing. That's and actually then they crazy. They went to go look for him, but he snuck around. Wow, great play. Wow, he's Speaking so sneaky. <laughs> we got a close little 1v1 E down champ versus Archdemon of Hell. Can you win it? All oh, the timers are ticking down, but there's the drone. Isaac. Oh, not able to do it. Really close win there. 
Yeah, that's. I'm still. I'm still. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the spike play. I'm sorry. Like I'm like. <laughs> did that just happen? That's actually crazy. Barely clutching out for his team. They're able to uh, pick up the RNG for them. So yeah, uh, great by them. And you know, all the alphas taken relatively fast. Looks like not everyone was in a battle zone this time around. So now everyone's just gonna do their usual and farm. But we can do just a quick RNG check uh, while we have time before. We get the pops here, and as you can see, everyone's pretty well spread out. There's actually not a team that's super, super strong as of right now. We do see the double Clodar ring as well on the team of No Flame. Yeah, you know what I'm happy for? No teams out. Oh, yeah. We're going to get some <laughs> good fights. Hopefully, we see some. Uh, we did see a little bit of the Kaniacs, you know, getting their RNG. That the D, like you said, stacking up slowly, getting their stuff going. Hopefully, they don't go out early this game. Oh, no, I said it. I cast the curse. Yeah. No, nope, I believe in them. It's a first place for the Kaniacs. We'll have to see if this time around it goes a little bit better. Uh, 13 seconds before our RNG does decide to spawn. Everyone really spread out, as you can tell from the map. So it's just another moment of, you know, everyone just picking a spot and just being lucky enough to not have to fight over any of it. So we will see that happen here any second. And boom, they're getting their RNG. They're getting their items on. And they're just going to have to continue farming, I guess. Uh, we'll have to see who decides to converge on who first. And it's actually such a surprise, because like you said, we still have all eight teams alive, and they are all completely spread out. Yeah, just like we might see a little bit of a fight here. Christian Rush getting caught out a little bit, taking so much damage, forced to blink out. Now the bomb does get a little bit of stick on Meowie, but Meowie diving is duending all over. Can he get the finish? Archdemon of Hell also blinking in, but F stop on the Jenny, not enough. It looks like Christian will go down. And Chocoboya yeah, also getting stunned on the backside too. Flames of Wrath of the Fiora absolutely destroying this Theodore. Uh -oh. And I think he wants more. He knows that Nathapon ran through red. They are communicating. Can he catch it? Can he see him? I oh, oh. enemy spotted. He does have the animals available to E2 if he has to, but it looks like 7-Strike will hit that and Ooh. the D-Skill will not be enough to get him out of the Nathapon pole. But he's going to keep going. Like I said, he has the animals available to get that extra dash, so he's just going to keep on chasing him. Oh, but 7-Strike is just going to keep hitting these to pull him <laughs> back. And his team is just still converging on him. They are just hunting him down as far as they can go. He's going to oh, try his no. best right now. He's going to run into the Jetty. Unfortunately, I think this might be our first team out. Seven Strike, you got to run. He uses the flash. Is he going to go to the jump pad? Jump pad. Jump pad. Go to the jump pad. Uh -oh. no, he's Actually, no flames coming over, too. This might oh. get a little scary. Oh, F stop oh TP. <gasps> oh, he's my gosh. He's a he's god. He's a wizard. He's a wizard. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, that was actually so crazy. The F stop being able to get him out of that one. And if you're not having R3 up to get this done, he's out of there. Wait, wait. Oh, it's no. a 1v1 for the resist. Oh, they don't know. No, oh, no. seven! Oh my god, stop. My heart. Oh, this is so crazy. So oh, it's your timer! <gasps> it's gonna have to blow the flash to get out. Oh. Still has it in a couple seconds. This is actually crazy that oh. Seven Strike might be the MVP of this game just from that alone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what happened to Waffler's team either, but we did see Snowy's a little orphan on the Cicella. Just a nice little fitting pick. Uh-oh, here we go. Maybe a potential team fight. It says Stridering and getting the fight on too. Zelenko channeling the Bianca Ol, hitting all three members on the back line. Chocobo Yao trying to run for his life. Christian Rush goes down, and that's just another minus 200 credits for them. Oh, you hate to see it. And I also, so Spacey Pating to see it. They might get caught here. Nice little 3P. Lofty checking the bush. They do see them, I believe. Might chase him into this bush. Not sure if they know the other team, but... They are smartly running through the red to try and get to their own zone. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, this team is just like barely escaping every single scenario. But unfortunately, that's just another 200 credits going down. And it's just going to further put them back in the mid game here. Not getting as much RNG as these other teams. But hey, they still get points for placement. So they're doing a great job at that as these two teams are posturing for this box here. Yeah, also super interesting. I want to look at this Lennox's item. She actually has Astro Helms and Glacial Shoes. I think a bit squishier than typical Lennox. Um, Astro Helm pretty normal on Lennox, but the Glacial Shoes, I feel like, you know, they typically run like oh. something a little bit tankier. Uh, oh my gosh, actually Hachimi getting one shot here. No chance for any kind of retaliation. Deligo trying to use the ult to save them, but Hachimi, yeah, just getting one shot. You know, this Adela pick, we are finally seeing it work out for Team Kaniac. Can't just pick Kaniac. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, Piggy picks out Chocobo Yao. They're just waiting here. They do get a pick, but actually they might get picked by Waffers oh no. here as well. Waffers pulling up. Reiki holding on one side as his team looks at the other. You got chance Snowy's are going to get these credits off a of cliff. Nice little infusion for them. And Chocobo Yao, Seven Strike are oh, running again. Yeah, running into no. another team. They can't catch a break. They've been just sitting in the corner and looks like they're going to pick another corner. That's crazy. I can't believe they stuck in that corner for so <laughs> long. It actually paid off for them getting the kill on a cliff. I think they may have gotten the credits as well, which is definitely what they need in this uh -oh. time, uh, but they still don't have enough to res oh. the team, unfortunately, but Delinko getting found by Ida and Chen. Delinko going to try to use the raid of the Vampire Queen, but unfortunately going down immediately, so it is going to be another minus 200 for the team of Bloodsport, so they do not have enough credits this time to res, so they will have to ride it out for a bit here and get some of those credits online. 
Yeah, they just res the Yawn, and I think Delinka getting a little bit too aggressive trying to get that vision when his teammates were resting on the bottom side, and he does pay dearly for it. But we do not have a full team out. Looks like these teams, uh, Bra and Bloodsports, will have to farm a bit to get those credits to get going. Uh, Omega should be spawning here shortly. Let me see a quick, quick map check, maybe. Uh, actually, oh, it's already been taken. Oh, we were watching so much in school. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of excitement going on in this game here that... Yeah, it looks like our next day cycle is upon us here. And we do see Chocobo Yao and Seven Strike still just trying to get enough credits for their teammates. Still far off, though, unfortunately. So they're just riding around the island. Two teams here in Factory. It looks like Super going to be trying to scout them out here. I think he knows that they're in the area. We see going to check with Sniper Skill. They're just both, it's, they're just, it's a standoff. They're both waiting. <laughs> Yeah, we, we do have to mention the change. Oh, oh my god! Actually, we should just send out. Yes, we should send the ult, not quite getting uh, the follow up they wanted, but Gobu is flanking. They look like they want oh, to no, fight. We see, we see is down. Oh, he does get engaged on Superior. Absolutely chains. He's seeing this. We see can he run out there, chasing him down there, running through his teammate. They said, We don't care, but the Jenny's doing so much damage. Yeah, Jazz doing so much damage on the backside with this Jenny. Frankie getting dangerously low. Actually, they full engage on him, but Jenny does go down in the passive. Can they do it? Frankie running, Jazz not able to catch, and this is looking like a really close fight, but Gobu is full HP. He might be able to kill Jazz here. The oh JTC, the big Alonso man taking him down. Gobu said, hey, come here, you're not done yet, too. One more. Frankie following it up with the bike, with the spin, with the damage, and that is going to be lights out for Homo's laptop. Ooh. And we do see another fight here as well. Lochte having to blink out. Looks like Annalise is already dead to 2v3, but oh my god, one goes down. Lily's doing so much damage on the Zatine, but oh, Lochte taking Jenny down in the passive of a bow. Rozzy is so full. Full HP, Lily battle getting dangerously close. It looks like they are going to res here, opting to run away, and oh, just, oh my god, my heart. Yeah, that was crazy. The checkmate actually being the saving play. They're able to dodge Yuki ulti and also taking them out. And unfortunately, they did lose a member, though, so they're going to have to leave. But hey, they did get a kill of their own during it with Wick spotting here. It looks like it will be the team of Kui able to take this without anyone else in the area. So a quick, easy Wick for them. Lucky for them, as no one else will decide to contest it because everyone else is still spread out here. And I think every, no, not every team is full. We still have two teams missing a member, so they're still needing to get enough credits here and rat it out. As two teams are on a standoff here for the console, Snowy's is going to try to look for a pull here on any of these members. Flames of Wrath possibly looking for the flank. Or maybe they're just trying to get out. Eden Chan looking for his chance to pull, but no one really going for the chance to go. But it looks like Eden Chan is going to decide to go in. Is going to miss a pull, unfortunately. Snowy's. Is they able to get anyone here? Flames of Wrath doing quite a bit of damage with the Fenty here as well. Meowie deciding to go in here. Looks like Soul Stealer will be popped. Reiki going in on the aggressive, just in the middle of both of these guys. Still a little bit healthy. Stasis is going to come out, is going to dodge the ulti from the Jenny Snowy's very, very low, but it's okay. There's a Sella. This is where they do the most damage. And his team actually completely taking them out. No problem. Snowy's completely healthy as she does finish Meowie's body with her team. And now Flames of Wrath is just going to have to walk away from this one. And so, Jenny, do they get caught? No, they actually don't. Yeah, 30 okay. seconds left. They might be looking for this res, but I'm not sure they know this other team's there. They have just a little oh, bit no. of time to get it. Oh, I think they, they know. Run into it? I think they know. I think they can feel it coming. But there is a lot of fighting here. This team's going to have to run down to beach as well as Kui is pushing with that wick buff. And it does look like Envoys of Hell will be down a member for the rest of the game. Also, it looks like Kaniax was not able to get enough credits to res their teammate as well. So they oh, will wait. be another duo on the map. I think they're going oh, like, for it. Any? I think. Yeah, did they have enough time? I don't know if they clicked it. She got it. Tunnel, unfortunately, getting found by Superior. Going to try to use the jump pad here, but it looks like Super will be going with them as they did use the spell shield to stop the crossbow skill. And Lofty is going to be taken down here as well, so it will be Kaniax dropping second here. Yeah, it looks like Jenny did get the res off just barely in time, and they still have enough timer to get out. I don't know if Jenny can get through this. She only has five. Oh, pistol skill. Okay. Oh, we'll getting a little close for them. Uh, but yeah, unfortunate for the Kaniacs going down again, you know, like we said, not able to get that res. And we do have the final six teams here waiting for these zones to close down a bit. Looks like Bloodsports is getting chased down by Kui up here in Hotel. And oh my god, every team is somehow in beach. One, two, three, four teams. <laughs> One team in Uptown. We might see some crazy fights here. Looks like no team wanting to full engage, knowing full well the consequences of a 3P. Looks like Wafflers dipping their head in and they said, never mind, it's too busy. We're getting out of here. They're like, yeah, no, thank you. We want to go to the next zone. And, you know, they're not going to be able to run very far as it looks like No Flame is going to be closing in on them as well. They might be a little bit sandwiched here if Super does recognize it. It looks like Frankie sitting here as well. Gobu. Kind of waiting. Doesn't want to give away that they're hiding in this spot here. They do see Reiki. So Super is going to go immediately. 
as he is being pulled around a little bit here. Looks like they are able to make it out just okay. Running back to beach, superior not able to get that catch on them. But yeah, just running for the hills, trying to stay safe. They know that there are so many teams here and they don't want to commit to anything that they don't have to. I think a lot of these teams, you know, probably looking a little bit to just play for placement here. You know, they know the points are getting very close and they know just that little bit of placement does matter a lot for this, fi uh, this third game before we go into the final game. So just kind of sitting in their corners, making sure not to cause too much noise. You know, you don't want the other teams to know where you are. But it does look like we are shortly going to be in the two final zones of Beach and Uptown. We'll have to see how each of these teams kind of sets up for that. But we do see Kui with that wake buff, chasing people around. Probably going to claim one for their own. Uh, Trucker Boyao ripping the ult to get away. Pretty smart move, but they will have to be pretty careful as they are down a big fighting tool. Yeah, and there's so many teams just hiding in the area. Everyone just kind of designating a bush as there. Oh. The seventh strike is going to get engaged on here, as we just said. It is going to try to get around Christian Rush a little bit, taking damage as well. Triple Yao completely falling immediately, as this team is unfortunately just not having enough RNG to really keep up with these other teams, as we did see earlier. They had to run so much, as actually the team of No Claim chasing down a cliff here as well in the area. Christian going to try to sneak by them as if nothing happened. We'll super recognize that he is around. Christian actually is going to keep going around. I don't know if he has the time to do that, as Kitty Kang is fighting Eden Chen here. Not enough damage though to take them out. The Jenny passive will be popped. Snowy's just trying to hide in the corner as their teammate is running on the other side. There's so much going on. People are falling left and right. The Lake is still on the ground. Christian getting as much damage on the team as he can, but Super is going to try to steal the kill here. A lot of damage from that Tonfa skill. Christian getting taken down by Frankie. Super picking up the kill on Hachimi. I think the team of No Flame just came out <laughs> victorious in all of that. <laughs> Yeah, they downed Delinko early, they chased the clips down, and then they said, oh hey, everyone else is fighting here, we can take more kills. Just really, really good play by them, good timing. Uh, we do see Snowy's stuck in that top corner away from E. Danchan. They are just a duo, so not much they can do anyways, but here we go. Final two zones, we do see Envoys of Hell and Kui kind of facing off in Beach. Looks like No Flame is routing out their uptime to make sure it is secure for themselves. Not sure if they're going to look for a little bit more piece of the pie. We do have 30 seconds until Night 6 happens where these zones will close down. It does look like No Flame is just going to posture, set up some cameras, get some vision, and then opt to take in the zone. But actually, here we go. Looks like Uptown is going to be our contested zone here. We do see three teams converging. One is just a duo, so they might not be doing much, but I think it's on Envoys of Hell to really make something happen here. See if they opt in for kills or to try and go for the zone. Oh my gosh, the aggressive flash from Flames of Wrath going in here. Two Fiora R's down. One more will be the stun onto Snowy's. They are going to try to run away with that Soul Stealer. It looks like the grab will be done by Snowy's here. A lot of damage is going to be put out, but yeah, they're just going to keep on chasing them. They know that this team has less timer. Eden and Shang going to get a lot of damage with that Alpha skill and actually take out Flames of Wrath here and completely down for the count and it looks like the timer should be really close i think he didn't you know he has actually less and so he's will be taken down so it looks like the envoys of hell will take these two kills pretty easily here but unfortunately they're just gonna fall to red because they won't have enough timer to get to this final zone and their third teammate being down arch demon hell gonna try to wait oh, wait There's no shot no hurry Jason, oh run! no this could be disaster it's, oh no super doesn't know that they were fighting in red they're gonna have no timer to wait, fight they might make it zone. Oh Wait, no! No play might be down. They only have five seconds. Meowie and Flames of Wrath are gonna make it back to the zone. They could win the game. <laughs> no play has ten seconds to make something happen. They have to go in. They are going in. Kitty can getting dangerously low on the Jenny. It does look like they got one kill down already. Swag trying to do as much as he can, but the timers! They're gonna explode! <laughs> and that's it! Oh no, yeah, Gobu only having eight seconds. Kitty King having more than Super Hero in the dodge. And Kitty King still has his passive available, but unfortunately their teammate was taken down. <laughs> and they just do no! No Our team is in hell making the greatest play ever going into the zone. I can't believe they tried to third party that. This is exactly what the change was intended to do. You can get so punished if you decide to leave your zone and go for the 3P. You have to go through so much red. You lose so much time. And if there's a team there, what are you going to do? Oh my no, god. No. Does the Envoys of Hell, that we have to find out, do they know that this team is only a duo? They just need to walk up and get the information and get the vision. Kitty Kang going to try to play aggressive so they do not know. Swag going to be building traps as well. Meowie, I think, is recognizing, you know, it's going to go in the first ulti from the Jenny going out. And second one coming out as well as one Jenny's passive does fall. A lot of damage coming out. Flames of Wrath with that Fiora ulti. Looks like one Jenny will be going down. Kitty Kang still healthy, but Flames of Wrath should get the last kill here with that W. Meowie still completely healthy. Swag left in a 1v2 here, unfortunately. Gonna try to take out the body to get the cooldowns back, but I don't think it'll be enough as Meowie is just cutting him up. And it looks like Swag will be taking down here in just a moment as Flames of Wrath is still completely healthy and everyone's timer is just fine. Meowie just, god, this guy is so tanky. He just does not want to be taken <laughs> down as Meowie finally takes him down. And Envoys of Hell being the 
Surprise victors! <laughs> I three. don't even know what to say about that game. That is the eternal return we'd love to see. Maybe not as a player, but as a spectator, that is exactly what I want to see. Chaos absolutely raiding in that game and making it an amazing spectator sport. Oh my god. <laughs> no, that, I can't believe that just happened. That was so funny. I was like, ah, oh, you know, they get their kills, they're gonna move on, it's fine. And I was like, oh my god, they're actually going for it. <laughs> no, and I think when they got the kill on Edanchan and Snowy's, they had just enough timer to res yeah. their teammate. They made it to the zone with two seconds and they're like, oh, no one's here. Yeah, they're also. like, oh, that's so weird. All right, I guess I'll just chill here. Yeah, like, that I, is so crazy. I mean, it ended up working. I mean, I think, you know, we, we did talk about it. They did opt in to just go for kills, guaranteed points. You know, they know that's a duo. But it turned out into so much more. It turns out for a game win. And I think with that, we have three unique game winners from three different games. Yeah, I think you're right. That wow. was so crazy. So many crazy things happened that game. I mean, what, we had like the seven strike, like run from like halfway across the map into getting the teleport into rezzing his teammate because yeah. Snowy's was the only one trying to res. We into... had the BZ incident. The, yeah, we the had the BZ incident. incident. Oh, like, wow. oh my God. I mean, I'm... oh my gosh. That was so crazy. There's so many crazy things that just happened in game three. I can't even, I can't stop laughing and smiling when this happened because it's actually so crazy. <laughs> like we were just talking about how they made these final zone changes. So this kind of stuff wouldn't happen and it yeah. still happens. I mean, that's <laughs> what happens when you take like a huge risk with that. You left your safe zone where you're not contested at all. And even if someone did come, like you have so much more timer than them because they've been in red and they opted to go for broke. And I think uh, they did in fact go broke <laughs> yeah that's actually crazy so, yeah that's gonna maybe we always talk about how the scoreboard is gonna be crazy after you know our last couple of games so we'll have to see what the scoreboard looks like after that one i mean a lot of kills across the board we saw a lot of team fights in the early parts of the game but not a lot of teams going out this time around so a lot more kills kind of going around this time and then teams falling a little bit later so that is a good thing to see here no, I will say, you know, uh, we talked about, you know, the, the zones getting smaller in the mid game, but they kind of decrease at a slower rate than they did previously. And I think that kind of showed, you know, we did have like the final three or four zones and we had, I think we had six or seven teams alive and mm -hmm. it was just a mess. You know, we had like four teams uh, beach, which turned into like two teams uptown, no flame pulled up. And then it was like ABC on ABC on ABC. <laughs> and it was kind of just carnage all over. But I mean, oh, I mean, it was fun to watch. It was it was a great time. Yeah, that was crazy. A lot of like good team fight moments. I mean, what we saw Lockney in school, he used his checkmate to not only dodge the ulti from the Yuki, but he also got the kill as well. So yeah, that was great from them. And keeping them alive a little bit longer, unfortunately, they were a duo for most part of the game. So they weren't able to really do much after that. And then what we saw, which Jenny was an Archdemon of Hell, which that that res was what them, won them the game. They got the res like yeah. barely at the end of night four. And then, you know, all of a sudden they win the game. So look yeah, at that. I was really surprised, you know, we did see the Jenny go over to that kiosk with, I think, like, five seconds left, so just barely making it, and then, you know, for the rest of the game, I feel like that was actually more terrifying, is Jenny, after she got the red, she only had five seconds of red timer, so they either had to play perfectly or never step into red, and, I mean, they somehow made it happen, and I, they came out on top, so good for them. I know, right? That was actually so crazy <laughs> that that happened in that kind of way, and yeah, there's one ending, like, all of our final zones have been so crazy between, like, three... You know, three teams being in a final zone or, you know, that happening. It's always been kind of a riot. And now we get to see what happened after that final game to the standing. Oh, yeah. So let's oh, go yeah. into the scoreboard here for you all so you guys can all see what has happened on the scoreboard. And it will still be No Flame in first with now 50 points. They still got a lot of kills from that game, even though they didn't win. They got a lot of kills from that third party in Uptown. And we do see Kui in second now with 34, Envoys of Hell in third with 33, getting that game win there. And then we have Homeless Laptops in fourth with 28. Following with the bottom four, we'll have Wafflers with 19, the Kaniacs with 11, being above Blood Sports, who also have 11, but they have more kills, and then Bra being in eighth here. Yeah, you know, and even though we do see some of these teams not as much as the others, we do still have one more game. We did talk about it, you know, No Flame had gotten about 18 points per average game, so it is very possible, you know, for some of these lower teams to overtake the standings, you know, one pop-off game, one good set of kills, some good situations to get some extra kills. Like, you could finish anywhere. And again, we do have to stress that getting the best placement you can each week is really important. Uh, one big change that happened over last season was uh, last season.
Then only two out of your three weeks were scored points wise. So if you had, let's say, 70 points one week, 50 points the next week, and 12 points, the 12 points didn't really matter because it wasn't scored. But this time around, every single week will count. So mm -hmm. every little placement matters a lot. And again, you just don't want to be the very bottom of your group, and you will make it to at least the wild card stage and get to play in another set of games to make it to the final. Yes, more games for us to see and cast and see all the excitement that's going on. I mean, I don't know if I can take another exciting game like that. I mean, <laughs> that was actually way too crazy for you. It's not what I was expecting. And, you know, speaking of exciting and crazy games, when we go into our final game, we will have our first ban. We will have Jenny Ooh. banned while going into game four. So we'll have to see some changes coming out from Jast and Kitty Kang mostly because they were the two that have been playing mostly Jenny going into a lot of these games, especially in scrims. So we'll probably see them on something different. Uh, Archdemon of Hell, they were playing Chloe before, so we might see them back on that. Uh, just a little pre-tell to what we could see in the next game here before we get there. But other than that, I don't know if I'd see any other changes from any other teams. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these teams, you know, working with what they have and being pretty happy with it. Um, I think I think if you go for a big team comp change or a big mix of pace, it's kind of it's kind of the wrong time to do it now at game four. Mm -hmm. I think game three is a great time to mix it up because you still have you still have two games to mix it up. But with game four, uh, I feel like you might as well play what you've had. Kind of just try and work out the kinks and play it to the best that you can, as opposed to trying to go for broke and like you know just like whip out a new comp, new characters. Uh, but I do want to talk about you know you did say Jast you know has been playing that Jenny a lot. Uh, this team did last season. I believe they played what Alonso, Bernice, and Nadine crossbow yeah. right. So mm -hmm. see if they come back to that. Might have two Nadines in lobby. Uh, curious to see if they still meet up in hotel. You know, we have seen homeless laptops again, kind of devouring the Kaniacs every time in Hotel Beach. See if that team maybe switches up where they go. Uh, I think pretty much everyone else might might more or less be the same now. Yeah, I mean, but we see like the team of Eclipse. They like to meet up in police station. They also pick up a lot of early kills. I know we've touched on it before, but they're a team that is getting a lot of early kills as well. But unfortunately, they just keep falling out of the game early. Uh, Lily Petal's team seems to be meeting up in Beach, which we just did mention that they kind of run into homeless laptops every now and then. Uh, Snowy's team, I think they've been meeting up in Forest, but not a lot going on there as well. And then some of these other teams, they seem to be a little bit separated until about night one, and then they kind of meet up in a zone. Uh, I haven't really noticed if it's been a designated zone, but it is a zone either way, as we will go into our final game here. So we'll see if those changes come out. It looks like the first one we do notice is Jass is going to be on the Sniper Aya, which he's been playing in Scrims. That's not something unusual to see here. We see Kitty King going to okay. be going over to the ISOL, a personal favorite of That's Uzma my here. boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do believe, was this the team that ran a triple ranged mage in scrims the other day? I know I Kitty King was... loves to... Oh, go ahead. I think it may have been, yeah. Yeah, I know Kitty King loves to play those kind of mage characters. Uh, I, I do believe uh, either last season or the season before, they played a lot of triple mage comps, you know, very, very hard to engage on, very high damage, but obviously very squishy. Uh, mm -hmm. It does look they aren't going to play triple mage, but instead just kind of a mage in ISOL, uh, standard AD carry on Razi, and the tank on Yuki, you know, Swag, pretty well known for his two-handed Yuki play. And I think the other teams are exactly as we predicted, everyone running exactly what they were running before, uh, obviously minus Jast on that Jenny and a couple other Jenny players, but nothing new uh, that we haven't seen so far. Yeah, not a lot of big changes coming out from really any team. I mean, the Wafflers completely changed their team comp. Uh, they decided to stay with this one with the Cicela, getting a lot of those kills with the pull from her as well. And Eden Chan able to chase down a lot of kills as well with the Soul Stealer and with his dash as well. So, I mean, it's doing a little bit more favors for them, getting a lot more kills in the early and mid game. Uh, Frankie Super, I mean, this is a comp they've run, you know, all the time. <laughs> so this is what they're most comfortable with. So there's really no reason to change it. Uh, no Alonzo ban coming out from any of these games, as it's only been him and Cairo being the two playing the Alonzo. So it's not like they have to worry about adjusting anything with their tanks, so might as well keep with it as it is. I'm surprised that, like, Kaniacs or Bloodsports didn't make any changes, because I know they do have, like, slightly other comps that they play. I know Eclisp has been known to switch to, like, Felix, and Hachimi has, like, some other picks under his belt as well with, like, the Aiden or even the William. But they decided to kind of stay with that. Same thing with, like, I guess with the Kaniacs as we've talked about. I mean... Lily Petal has known, been known to flex to like Rio or Bernice. Uh, Lockney, I know, had been practicing the Vanya as well. And Annalise had also been playing some Arda. So I know they have other picks under their belt, but they're just deciding not to kind of bring them out this time around. Yeah, and something else that we haven't talked about, uh, obviously because this is the first week of ERCS, uh, these groups will be facing every other group. So, you know, again, Group A is fighting Group C today, but Group A will also fight B and D in the two coming weeks. 
And who is in your groups, I think, changes a lot of your team comp and also, like, how you play around that week. Because, you know, next week, maybe no flame fights, you know, there's three Alonso's in the group, and now they have to play a different comp every other game. And that changes a lot up, so a lot of these teams will be scouting out those other teams, seeing what everyone else is playing, see what they might have to change. And even besides just the bands, you know, you might say, oh, there's a lot of engaged comps in this week's groups. Maybe we play something that's kind of more defensive. So, interesting to see how that will play forward uh, from here. And as we've talked about in the past, uh, we do see some fighting already going on in Beecher. Lockney gonna try to use the castling to get out, but Cairo is gonna keep chasing. Probably does have the point coming up soon here. Jass trying to get some damage out of Lily Petal. Lockney might be a little bit trapped here as Jass is gonna be swinging around here. It's gonna activate the Strider for that extra damage and for the movement speed. Fortunately, not gonna hit Lockney though. It's gonna hit both the speed gates, so no early kills coming out for them, but we did see Kui fall down there below. It looks like the team of Bra getting a kill. Uh, seven strike getting an early one on the Yuki here. You know what? Kaniac, yeah. <laughs> Kaniac said no one kills us three games in a row in beach. Or four yeah. games, rather. Only three. Only That's three. The last one you'll get. <laughs> so this time they get out. But yeah, like you were saying, with the team comps kind of changing, yeah, the bands will definitely like shuffle in the upcoming weeks. I mean, Alonzo's like a huge one that we saw banned in the past. And there's also the fact that no flame. Oh my gosh. Some damage coming out here on Flames of Wrath actually is going to get hit by the stun, so that will be his death here as the two of Kaniacs getting a kill of their own here. 30 seconds left in day one, as we might have another death coming out in 7 strike. No Flame is going to take them down as well, getting a kill on their scoreboard too. Yeah, nice little pickups for all of these teams, getting a little bit of early mastery, getting a little bit of early credits. See what they do with it. Uh, it does look like Gobu, you know, we haven't touched on this. Uh, Gobu looks like he is running the campfire augment, which means every potato he gets will be a sweet potato. Every fish he gets will be a salmon, so on and so forth. Oh my gosh, that um, I'm not good. sure. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> if any other team has been taking advantage of this, but uh, you know, that guaranteed really good boost can be very strong. Um, we also haven't talked about Carnivore either. I'm not sure if any of the teams are running it, but that's something that is very rampant in the North American meta currently. You know, just thing to take time away from eating or, or crafting food rather, and just taking meat off animals can give you a lot of time to, you know, get better farm rotations, get some more uh, kills on the board, just better tempo. But again, I don't know if anyone is running it, uh, but we do see a little bit of a tussle up here. Kitty King on that ISO looking aggressively is tagging three people with that W, getting that bomb root down, but not any follow-up. Looks like they might chase them down though. See what happens here. Yeah, Swag is looking a little aggressive, unfortunately. Not going to be able to get these guys, but they are still kind of looking for it, which is a little, a little interesting. These guys are going to try to take the bear as these guys are still coming up here. Kitty Kane going to get a lot of damage once again. Bowser going to flash in to try to get that ulti, but Hachimi going to use the ulti of his own. The Tetragon going to be able to help get them away. Swag still going for it here, but unfortunately no stun coming out. So it's like the team of Blood Sports is able to walk out of this one. Yeah, Pistol Isol, you know, kind of the new pick of this game. Uh, we can't talk about it a little bit, you know. He is a very good engager, you know. He can land his root on his Q to have his teammates follow up, but also, I think more importantly, he's a very good zoning character, you know. He can place those ultimate traps on the ground to keep people away from certain areas. Here, as the meteor spawns, he could throw them down and kind of force teams to walk through them, which will be doing a lot of damage. Uh, speaking of a lot of damage, we do see Yowie diving in 2v2, trying to do as much damage as you can. Edanshan getting dangerously low. Flames and Yowie trying to chase him, get the kill. They are already both missing one teammate, so it looks like they will opt to just finish with the body, get the reses, and maybe try and contest this objective here in about 10 seconds. Map check. Yep, here we are. It looks like everyone's completely spread out <laughs> once again. I mean, a lot of these teams are contesting the same objectives, like Homeless Laptops is always at Hotel. It looks like uh, Lily Petal's team deciding to be up in Temple this time. I believe Kitty King's team was the one that had been taking that previously. But with them being a member down, they weren't able to be here. Uh, Bloodsport's always going to be taking over Archery to get to those credits and the farm from there. And it looks like No Flame getting the factory farm this time around. And yeah, like I said, once again, just no one really fighting over a specific objective. So everyone's just going to kind of do their farming rotations and get their credits up. Yeah, I think that's definitely something new to note with uh, the new season. You know, you do have, again, hotel tree, temple tree, and cemetery tree. That's three. You do have two meteorites. So that makes a total of five RNG pieces that you drop on day two. So, you know, the odds of running into another team you know, while while there still could be a chance. A lot of these teams opting out to just take a free one, not really wanting to risk it that early. Uh, and we do see a little bit of a risk here as Meowie may be looking to engage on this Camillo. Arch Demon fell back on the Chloe, getting some auto in, but the Eclipse hitting the Shredder in. Delico is going to follow up with the Chloe ult. They do pull engage Hachimi, throwing down the rings as well. Eclipse doing so much damage. Meowie blinking over the wall, just escaping, and it looks like Eclipse might just go down here, being left in the dust by his teammates. They did not, unfortunately, finish the kill, and they do lose the fight. Yeah, unfortunately, like, they have a lot of big teamfight ultis, 
uh, with the Tetragon and the Reign of the Vampire Queen, and unfortunately they just did not get that kill early enough, so they weren't able to get a kill at all as seven strike is gonna use f-stop to try to stop these guys from killing him but unfortunately two will be not in it so it should be seven strike falling down here 50 seconds still before battle zones pop so they still will be up in time but it looks like their hyunwoo is gonna be running around all by his lonesome for a bit so hopefully he doesn't get found looks like factory is completely free so they should just be fine to chill yeah a small caveat if you do die before you know these battle zones do start they will be respawning and they will get the day scan so here chocobo yao on that theodore should see where all the teams are and he can shout it to his teams hey Factory's open, we could do that. There's a couple people docked, they might go here. Um, I know this is a strategy that some people kind of use, not maybe on purpose, but you know, they do play a little bit aggressively with about one minute left of day two. Getting a nice little scan can help your team, you know, and you can capitalize on that and use it to your advantage. So we'll have to see if they do take advantage of it. Looks like Envoy oh. Jopel, ooh, getting caught out a little bit. Meow getting tagged by the Bola. Looks like Flames of Wrath is running away on the top side, but it looks like Misu and Jas are going to get a lot of damage here, taking down one Yaoi. Diving around will go down as well, but this team should be okay. Oh my gosh, the snipe. <laughs> they are going to live in the battle zone. They will lose it, but they are going to be okay for the rest of the game. Yeah, and as you can see there, like, they have so much synergy with all of their ultis being oh. able to kind of take out one person here as Gobu is going to find Reiki here. He's going to pop the ulti right away. A lot of damage though, as this entire team of No Flame is just going to dive on him with the totem coming out, but it's not going to keep him alive very long as Gobu is going to rip the ulti to try to take out this kill. So it will be one person down. Eden Chen trying to craft in the corner. He may have gotten an RNG from the animal. I think Frankie is now recognizing it. So they are going to go on the aggressive here and take this from him. But it is going to be a glacial ice. But hey, that is still something they could use some glacial shoes in the early game. Just have to adjust their build a little bit here. Snowy's is going to fall as well. So there'll be no flame taking the beach battle zone. Yeah, I actually wanted to talk about that. We just saw it there as the bear exploded. Uh, the new battle zone changed for the new season. When the battle zone starts, all the animals explode. But what I didn't know actually until a couple days ago is the animals can still drop RNG. And as we saw, that mutant bear had the purple light shining on it, indicating that it did have a piece. Was a tree, as we found out. But yeah, kind of lucky that it did happen, but then very unlucky that they lost <laughs> the battle zone. And they couldn't use it. But hey, yeah. like you said, No Flame is very happy to take it. Frankie yeah. actually with four RNG pieces already. Uh, holy crap, can we get a tab check? No flame looking very strong. Actually, hold that thought. We do see a potential <laughs> fight coming in. Chocobo, yeah, running for the hills. He is going to ult oh. away. Invisible does not quite catch it, and he does get taken down. Oh. Yeah, as you can see, like, there it is. Like, so much damage comes out. Like, Cairo hits a point. I mean, that's probably a full IAW that you're just taking, and there's nothing you can do about it. Wisu hits a bola. That's another full IAW you're taking, and there's really nothing you can do about it. So... Their team comp is like, it's very linear and simple to like a game plan, which is really nice because then they can concentrate on other parts of the game. Yeah, but you mentioned it, you know, just that synergy. Aya is taking the Strider as well, doing so much damage with W. Uh, we are looking at the scoreboard here real quick. It does look like Frankie is holding four of the pieces for his team. It looks like these other teams are still be picking up a little bit. It looks like Kaniax is actually opting to put a little bit more on Estelle to get her a little bit tankier. Christian Rush with that new Titan's armor, nice and cool item. We see a little bit there. Jast already with the Persona. Uh, yeah, a lot of these teams looking pretty strong. Yeah, no one really over strong. It's a little bit surprising that actually Frankie's the one with all the RNG as we do see possibly another fight here for this tree. Sniper skill is going to go out. Going to see which team is ahead. We see just waiting in the wings here. Klesp is going to try to look for a pull. Is going to use that Strider to play these teams into him, but he's taking so much damage from this Aya. He can't even do anything about it as Jaff's now going to get some damage out of Chibi. Unfortunately, the bullet is going to miss, but I don't think it really matters as Cairo is going to get the last laugh as he gets the point on Hachimi here. Another fight starting absolutely immediately. Eden Chen use the ulti to dodge the Yuki cut as Reiki is going to go in and use the totem actually pretty early here. So this team is able to go in, but the pull is going to hit Bowser, who's going to be taking it really, really low as he does. He's actually to dodge the Jara ulti. Will that be enough as he has to take it down 2v2 now? Can Kitty Kane get enough damage for Swag to finish it off here? Swag still healthy, is able to possibly take out Eden Chen. Perry is going to go out. Kitty Kang taking a little bit of damage, but does not go down here. So it will be their team picking up the kills of Snowies. It's going to have to run as No Flame is in the area. Ooh, yeah, really close there for Snowies, but she is going to make it out very luckily. Yeah, that fight getting really close, you know, Swag missing the Yuki one a little bit with some good dodges, but they do follow it up. Again, that ice is so tricky. He is a great engage. You know, he he hit multiple bombs, hits those reeds to follow up with the rest of the team. Bowser getting a little bit uh, chased down, but ultimately ending well for them. Uh, and I did actually want to go back really quick to that stream fight too. I think a little bit of miscommunication from Bloodsports. Eclipse sending it with the uh, Strider and Engage on the Lennox. Zelenka was trying to flank her on the left side, but their timing was not correct. Speaking of timings, Wisu walking into the bush without his team getting a little bit of damage, but it looks like they are looking to fight. Looks like Cairo is going to follow in with that E. Like you said, the IW absolutely deleting the Chloe who cannot move, cannot cast. 
no ult, and that's just free credits for homeless laptops. Yeah, such a easy game plan for them, and another team fight possibly going out here. No, it looks like the team of Kui is just gonna walk away. They do not want to mess with this team this time around, as they are kind of do have to go all in, and they don't want to do that against a Bianca. As oh my gosh, the aggressive from Christian Rush here right down to Super is gonna have to double dash out. They do see the Theodore ulti coming out as well, as well as the seven strike ulti, and it's gonna actually kill his teammate, unfortunately, as he was caught in it. It gave Super the bat skill, and Frankie isn't able to chase this out. So a little bit of a messy start, unfortunately, for this team, but they almost were able to get one, but Super just able to use the Don Quixote to get out of there, but their team is going to be able to res their teammate in just a second. There we go. It's like nothing even ever happened. Yeah, on the other side, though, it does look like our two strongest teams are converging. No Flame and Homeless Laptops. We have seen them fight multiple times over these games. Not one having a lead over the other, but we do see Cairo full engaging with that Alonso. E. He is on the backside trying to keep it up, but Superior hits a double bump. Just oh immediately gosh. goes down, and Wizu follows as well. That is actually crazy. Cairo's gonna have to be the one to get out of this one, but I don't think he can against this team. Super with the crazy play of hitting that flash bat skill to actually win them that fight. That was insane. I thought his flash would have been almost doomed. I mean, if he gets eye ulted, he's just like good for dead, but unfortunately that bat skill is gonna be the doom for homeless laptops, unfortunately falling eighth here in our final game. Yeah, the confidence you have to have to blink into two carries without anyone else on your team, hit the two-man bat skill and follow it up with a Q to finish it off. You know, that's... We do talk about it time and time again. Superior rank one is a peak of consistency, but we are going to see another fight here. Flames of Wrath getting in on the Fiora. Delinko going down very quickly. They are going to chase down this Lennox who has no escape. The Strider popped to get a little bit of the slow. Maybe might make it, but Lennox, uh, no dashes, is probably going to get run down. Nope, we decided that's okay. We'll take these. Yeah. Good thing, because there's another team in the area. Got to be a little bit careful here, as they are up there. Seven strike could be looking for an f-stop angle, but oh, looks like they're just going to back away, possibly go for one of the boxes below. Two teams actually up in gas station. F-stop actually being used to almost catch a clisp there, but is it going to find him? So he's going to have to run through red and burn a lot of timer, but maybe he is able to loop around and get the res. He's only four credits off, unfortunately, so he might just have to rat in the corner. It does look like Superior is trying to get a taste of this seven strike. Does blink oh, no. over the trap, knowing it's there. Theodore does ult away, but isn't it enough? They are going to root him. Superior's actually pretty far from the team. Gobu's not there. They are going to Soul Sealer out and make it okay. But a little bit of a sticky situation as they've used a lot of their cooldowns, and it looks like Noflame is wanting to get this chase and follow it up. One thing I just want to touch on that Bra's really good at is like wherever they're deciding to run, they're always in really good choke points for their death upon. It's actually so hard to chase this team as they're always going into areas that they could just, you know, put down like Nathapod skills and they can't really run through it because they're going to take a lot of damage and get rooted. Uh, same thing with the Theodore, able to get the easy root with his E as well. So they've been doing a really good job for being like in a mobile team to get out of a lot of these situations. Yeah, pretty good on them. Like you said, you know, Theodore is a character who loves the chokes. Speaking of chokes, we are in a little bit of one here. As Christian does go in, he oh, just misses the wall. Sam Delinko is going to throw down a of the Vampire Queen. But it looks like Chocobo Yao is getting taken down by a cliff on the backside. No teammate with him, and he is going to bleed to death as his teammates try and take up the rest of the fight. Hachimi dangerously low, walking away to get the rest. His teammates should be able to clean this up, but Christian and Seven Strike are playing this very aggressively. Eclipse getting hit around, Delingo being forced to stasis. Christian is pushing and pushing and pushing, but he might have pushed a bit too far. Seven Strike does tag Bianca with that E, is going to pull her back. Delingo, can he take down Seven Strike? Christian does go down to the backside. Seven Strike, the only one remaining. Can he do the damage? Delingo hit with another E tag, pulled back. Seven Strike doing as much damage. He does take down one, and he should be okay to make it out of here. But his teammates do go down. Looks like Eclipse is going to stop the res here. Chocobo Yao will be down here shortly. And 7 Strike again is going to have to run. Actually, wait. Eclipse looking. Oh, no. Oh. Unfortunately, is going to be found. 7 Strike is going to have to keep running. Eclipse is going to keep on going for it, though, as he does his Strider available. And he still has the heavy knee pads. But 7 Strike is able to get out. But is he able to get the res on his teammates is a question. He's actually going to go for it here With in archery. Timer. He's going to have to be really, really fast, though, because I think Achimi knows. 7 Strike, you got to run! And he unfortunately, has to he has right. to go back. Oh, no. Oh, this is actually so scary. Why didn't Hachibi just go right for it? Eclipse is noticing that they're here, but unfortunately, they're in red. Seven Strike cannot go back in, so they're in a tough situation here. Chocobo Yao trying to get as much damage. I think this team knows as the ulti is going to be ripped from Chocobo Yao. Delinko is going to use the Reign of the Vampire Queen. It's going to kind of put them in a tough spot. Seven Strike tagged by that Lennox ulti again. Isn't able to move without taking a lot of damage here. And unfortunately, that is going to be two of them being taken down. That was a really aggressive run. Oh, yeah. You know, sitting in the corner, he didn't have much time. And speaking of time, Snowy's is also out. She does does go down. Yi Dan Chan left 
running away on that Isaac, but Frankie is actually going to bike forward very aggressively. He doesn't have the pistols to go, so he can't catch up. But actually, the other team, Kanex, is going to be here. Kobu fully engaging. Superior getting so much damage on Lily Petal. Lily Petal kiting back, trying to do as much damage as she can. Lofty trying to stack up the Queen, but Gobu engages, does get the Alonso ult, and Frankie follows it up with the bike flip. They are going to chase them out. Analyst left alone. Superior is going to chase Frankie on that moped. We've seen time and time again, and that should be lights out for Analyst. CC chain, goodbye, lights out. NEX unfortunately falling 7th here, and yeah, there's no way you can get away from Frankie and Super. They are known to be the ones that'll chase you like time and time again because they just have so many tools to do so. And as you can see, Annalise not able to get out of that one from this team. This team is probably very, very, very strong if we could get a quick item check here. I bet we're going to see them, yep, on full RNG here, and even Gobu having some of his own. So they are extremely strong in this lobby. I mean, even Kui's looking pretty good, though. They have a quite a bit of RNG for themselves as well as a team of Envoys of Hell. So not a lot of teams are like that far behind and as you can see here Envoys of Hell being the ones picking up the wick but I don't even know if they really want to fight No Flame here. Ooh. Yeah, not sure if they want to take this, but I do think it's a great opportunity to fight. They do have that wick. It is a lot of additional damage. I think this is probably one of the best fights you could take on the team versus later in the game, but they opt out, uh, decide not to. It's going to get some farm, maybe get some control, and you know, I think that's okay too. Again, we talked about the placement being so important. Just another couple points uh, can do a lot for you in the rest of the game, and they opted to take those placement points, uh, you know. Oh. Speaking of placement, nice little claymore here. Bro, <laughs> we're, we're chilling, we're waiting. Oh, if that's oh. no, he actually pulls seven strike here. It looks like the ulti is going to be ripped. Christian actually barely pushing him back into the ulti from Chopo Yao, trying to get as much damage onto Eclipse as he can here. He is going to get rooted, but Christian Rush is not really doing a lot of damage to Eclipse here. It's all up to seven strike to get the damage. He does actually dodge a Lennox ulti this time, so he's actually able to freely move. Should get Bianca here in just a second once the stasis ends. And seven strike is going to pick up this kill any second now, and that will be them taking out Blood Sports this time around, which is. A crazy turnaround because they thought fought them like three or four times in this they, lobby alone and they finally got their win. <laughs> yeah, you know, Chocobo, yeah, actually positioning really well in that bush. You know, he was dipping and diving to try and kind of, you know, change the vision, but also staying around that corner, they couldn't really get to him. And we saw him just free fighting the whole time. Christian Rush, you know, he wasn't doing much damage, but he was taking a lot of the, uh, a lot of the direction from that team and taking a lot of the damage and you know that's kind of how they play around it i think you know theodore being allowed to do what he wants taking free shots christian rush is taking a lot of the damage getting a lot of healing from that theodore uh so you know we'll play to them yeah definitely as we do see no flame trying to find these other people here they do see that the cams are on so they probably guess there are people in the area do you see some pings on the map so there's at least two other teams here five teams still left available on the map here. Unfortunately, Eden Chan by themselves here in day five. So they're just going to be riding somewhere on the map. But Super is going to try to look for these other teams, it looks like here. Just going to scout out the bushes. Another ward in the area. They do see the team of Envoys of Hell here. As another team is actually right behind them. This is such a bad spot for them. They need to try to get out of this as best as they can. They might just have to hide in this corner. This is so scary as there's traps everywhere from both teams. Super. Oh, so oh. That's a little scary. They're gonna actually chase this, aren't they? Oh, and Seven Strike and Crusher Rush and Chocobo Yao also in the area. Chocobo Yao completely separated from his team, trying to use the ulti to get out, but it will not be enough, as it looks like Super is gonna easily clean that one up, as well as, what's that? Their, yeah, their Hanwu also falling. Seven Strike, unfortunately, all by himself here, and he's such an immobile character, I don't think there's really much as he's oh. gonna do. Is he maybe runs into another team? Yeah, he does. Yeah, uh, we are going to get the final two zones of Gas Station and Alley. I think this is probably one of the most cramped possible final two zones you could possibly get. All these corridors, tight chokes, not a lot of room to hide, you know. There's not a lot of actual space. It's just a lot of little roads and stuff. So I have to see how oh, these no. teams play it. Oh my god, Seven Strike is in the middle of four teams. What can he do? How can <laughs> play? I'm just a little photographer, please. He's just hiding. Eden Chen also hiding as well. Going to take a little bit of red here to try to hide in the corner, but this cam here is going to be on. Cam should go down momentarily, though, as Gobu is going to try to taste on Flames of Wrath here. They are going to chase them into 7 Strike, but I don't think 7 Strike can really do anything about it. Yeah, he's just going to go aggressive on him. Flames of Wrath going to try to go around 7 Strike now in this corner, but still, there's so many teams in the area. There's really nothing he can do, but all the other teams know also not to do anything. It's like, whoever aggresses on him, he can just kind of spell the doom for one of them it looks like bowser is gonna try to take the bait here archie from hell is gonna get the autos here who will get the <laughs> kill he will fall 
Yeah, you know, the arch the envoys of hell were indeed bringing the hell to Nathapon. Getting <laughs> stuck in that little corner between a rock and a hard place. But Miaoi is engaging on E-Danshan. I do believe they know that this is a solo player trying to get the rest of these kills. Uh, only about 20 to 15 seconds until these zones close. Uh, we did talk about it a little bit earlier. You know, this ISO pick so hard to push through. You know, he is going to have those traps. He is going to have those mines. And oh my god, actually, Superior has three blood items. I just noticed. Oh my gosh. He has weapon, he has bikini, and he has Chinese upper mask. Yeah, this guy's kind of strong. He is strong. Goku jumping in on Arch. Oh my gosh, Miaoi's going to go in. Oh, the Envoys of Hell getting taken down. Flames of Wrath just getting caught a little bit in the corner before his team was there. And we are actually finished right here. Yeah, that was like, I could see the thought process. They're like, oh, maybe they use some of their smaller cooldowns to get Eden Chen. But then they're also just in the corner for the Alonzo to ult. And they're all bunched together for all this AoE damage from Super and Frankie. There's really nothing they can do. So we'll be our two final teams now in the zone here. A lot of Isol traps being took, put down, as you talked about earlier, as well as Claymore, C4s, everything they can think of to stop Super from kind of diving in on this team. Kitty King going to try to do a lot of damage with the W here. It's going to be able to tag Gobu to get a little bit of damage here. But you know, as we talked about previously, Frankie and Super both having that Cloud R ring going to provide a lot of healing for their teammates. So, I mean, even if you get a lot of this poke damage off, it doesn't really do much. Oh, Zapir getting a lot of tag damage there. They are going to drone ahead, try and see what they can do. But yeah, unfortunately, you know, Isol Mine and Traps are on a lower or a higher cooldown rather than Frankie's Q, that Sylvia healing beam as we do see here. So, you know, Zapir is taking these chunks of damage, but guess what? Frankie can't just heal him up. They should be no problem. The time is now. The final zone is here. Kitty Kang trying to do as much as he can with all of the mines, set up everything. But here goes Frankie. He is healing up his team. Gobu looking for an engage. Swag getting kind of low. Swag is going to dash in. In Superior getting taken down to half HP. Kitty Kang does escape from Frankie on the backside, but they are going to take that one. They are going to take down two. Kitty Kang is the last one, and No Flame should be the winners here. Frankie, a little bit of BM, a little bit of moped breaking, and that is game four to No Flame. Oh my gosh, yeah, unfortunately they just do not have the items to keep up with No Flame there. I mean, you talked about it earlier, what, Super had three blood items? I mean, that's going to be really hard for them to take down, and unfortunately they just don't have, like, the high enough burst to take him down on his first engage. So there will be them being taken out, and No Flame being our victors of Game 4. Yeah, so we did actually cast a curse it again. Uh, we did not have four unique winners in these four games. No Flame did come away with two, but we did see some other teams take it on top. But yeah, really good gameplay. I think a lot of these teams, you know, we did talk about uh, the placement mattering a lot. A lot of these teams playing a little bit slower, opting in to, you know, go for placement, maybe sit on these corners. Um, I think the game went a little bit slower, you know. Uh, mm. I was very surprised by the Envoys of Hell again. You know, they did have Wick, they had the buff. They had no flame in a corner of the map that was also closing as well. So I was really surprised that they didn't pull the trigger. Um, you know, you might be a little bit scared of RNG, but you also have to admit, like, while you may get stronger as the game progresses, that team is also going to get stronger. So I usually like to think of, oh, I have Wick. Like, this is probably the best case scenario for a fight. And yeah, didn't take it. And I think they kind of paid for it in the end as they did get taken up by no flame. Yeah, a little unfortunate they did. They still get placed third. So, I mean, they still get quite a bit of points there. Not too bad. And unfortunately, like, some of our teams, like the team of Homeless Laptops, they got, like, a lot of points in their final two games, but they went, like, seventh or eighth in the final two. So it's a little unfortunate there that they're not getting the placement points, but they're kind of making it up with kill points. So we'll have to see what that does for them on the scoreboard. Unfortunately, what well, it was after that, it was the team of the Kaniacs being taken down in Forest, and slowly after that, it was Blood Sports being finally taken down by the team of Seven Strike and Christian Rush as they had fought, like, literally all game. And unfortunately, they just kept losing and losing until that final fight in Alley when they kind of got the bush cheese almost kind of. Seven Strike got pulled, but he also had heavy knee pads, so he's kind of safe. A little bit awkward, <laughs> but it worked in their favor. Yeah, I think we kind of saw one of the detriments of a team comp that uh, Ra was running, you know, the Hyunwoo, Nathapon, and Theodore. When you have two kind of immobile characters and you don't have a lot of ways to either protect them or to fully capitalize on what they do, you do kind of get run around the map by a lot of these full engage comps or the teams that are playing a bit more fluidly. So, you know, the Theodore and Nathapon spent a lot of the game running, so curious to see if they change it up for next week, uh, next block maybe. Maybe the teams are a bit more favorable. Maybe they switch up who they play with, but yeah. Uh, I would definitely consider that, and I think a lot of these other teams also have a lot to take in uh, with the games played today. Get a little bit of info. Um, we did talk about it, you know, all of Group A is together that will play together every single week. So that is No Flame, Blood Sports, the Kaniacs, and Bra. So, you know, getting a little bit of info from this week and changing next week, uh, I think is really important and should be probably high on the priority list for some of these teams. Yeah, for sure. 
And on top of that, I mean, they could still play in other things. I mean, we do have scrims for them to practice in as well. And they also have been practicing a lot in solo queue. I see these guys all the time practicing day in and day out. So, I mean, they could definitely get other picks prepped uh, if they so choose. And in, if anything, they can just kind of brush up on some other things as well. And I think we do have the scores available. So we can now tell you guys who was our victors in our first day of ERCS. Do you want to take it away? Yeah, I will take it away for <laughs> sure. In first place, again, we do have No Flame reigning consistent in today's games. Second place, Envoys of Hell just barely squeaking out second with one point over Kui, who was in third place with 42 points. And we do see Homeless Laptops in fourth place with their 35 points. Uh, rounding out the rest of the board, we do have Wafflers, 25 points in fifth place. Blood Sports with 17 points in sixth place. Bra coming up from the bottom to get 7th place with 14 points, and the Kaniacs uh, at the bottom with 12 points this week. Wow. Well, that will be the ending of our first day. Uh, no Flame, congrats to uh, winning the first day of ERCS. So that's going to be... Uh, it's going to feel really good, uh, putting them in a good spot on the final Matrix to see where they're going to be in the upcoming weeks. Uh, tomorrow, we will have BND this time around uh so you'll be able to see a completely new roster of players and teams which will be very exciting it will be the same time tomorrow which was so yeah, okay PM eastern <laughs> thank you yeah est yeah no it's because i'm cst so i like i have to think of like oh, wait, yeah. i have to put it in the next time zone because not everyone <laughs> is in my time zone everyone's so used to est so yeah 7 p.m est tomorrow we'll get groups uh b and d so i'm very excited to see them you'll be here with us again uh is there anything else you wanted to highlight on Thanks. So. I mean, I think that mostly covers it. We had some great games today, a lot of good showings from people, a lot of cool team comps. Uh, a lot of these teams, like we said, uh, fully new. You know, they did just flesh out their rosters and put together a team for this season. Only one team had played previous season with all three members. So a lot of these teams, like we said, you know, kind of shaking off the, the dust and cobwebs, getting their stuff figured out. Um, also, being on the big stage, being casted for everyone to see is a lot of stress as well. So maybe these teams could ease into it, maybe get a little less anxious as the weeks go on. But yeah, I just hope to see uh, good games continuing forward, see what these teams have to cook, and just see what NA has to bring to the big stage. Yeah, for sure. And as always, thank you all for being here with us today. And thank you for the people behind us that uh, do all the production. I uh, can't do this without you guys. So thank you for making everything so smooth and easy. We appreciate you as always. And I think other than that, I think we are ready to close for the day. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow for Groups B and D here at 7 p.m. EST. Yeah.